It is a new era in Moorhead, Minnesota. The new gymnasium has been complete and is ready for action here tonight as the Moorhead Spuds are in the holiday tournament finals against the D. LaSalle Islanders. Good evening, everyone. Alongside the former Spud, Riley Swenson, I'm Thomas Fox. Thanks for tuning in here on Spuds TV. Riley, the girls came off a big win against DGF tonight. They're going to have their hands full against a really good Islanders team. Absolutely. Last night was kind of the, the big ceremony, the closing down of the gym. Well, now in the new gym here, they want to try and open it up the right way. And like you said, it's a different animal than what they're playing tonight in De La Salle. And that's no discredit to DGF, but De La Salle is just flat out a better basketball team at this current point in the season. That's what you'd expect to see in a championship game. This is when it gets really fun, although it's early on in the season and you're still playing for a championship here and whenever you're playing for a championship the stakes are always going to be higher two teams coming off a win they both want to keep that momentum going i think for the spuds it's about building off that second half they had yesterday like you said against dgf they look really good that second half it's about keeping that going and getting off to a fast start here in the new gym i agree riley and the big part of the win for the spuds yesterday was their defense tom dryberg of course going with that occasional three like three quarters zone do you think that is going to be enough to stop this De La Salle team? Well, I would definitely expect to see it in spurts, but a team like DGF, I don't know how many times they've seen a zone, how many times they've practiced against it. Well, now De La Salle can come into the game after watching yesterday's and knowing Moorhead might put on that zone. I'm guessing at shoot-around this morning or at some point in their hotel room, they discussed, hey, we are going to see this zone. Here's how we plan to attack it. So I think it'll be fun to see how Moorhead's able to execute that zone when a team knows it's coming compared to last night when maybe they didn't know it was coming. And on top of that, how Tom Dryberg decides to put that on, take it off throughout the game and go back to man on man opposed to the zone is kind of the chess match he plays with that defense. We saw it a little bit last night and expect to see more of it here this evening. And the Spuds have a ton of young talent on the rise. That includes Avery Marquardt, who had a pretty good stat line yesterday and along with many other Morad Spuds on this roster, and I expect them to have a huge impact on this game tonight. Oh, absolutely, and I think yesterday we saw a lot of the scoring, like you'd expect, come from Annie Haran, had a couple three-pointers. Like you said, Avery Marcourt was able to get downhill and get to the rim. I think for the Spuds today, it's going to be need to be more of a balanced attack. I would expect De La Salle, like, the, similar to knowing the zone defense is coming. They can watch yesterday's game and say, all right, we know Haran's going to be able to shoot it to deep. We're going to try and take that part of the game away and try and take away what the Spuds do best. That's including Julia McAdams down on the block. It's going to need to be, I think, someone outside of those two. Last night, they were able to be very effective. And that, although they are very talented players, I think to beat a De La Salle team coming off a win, coming off five wins in a row, they're going to need some other players to step up. But I think we saw flashes of that last night, and I think they're capable of it. I agree with you, Riley. And it is almost game time here at the new Moorhead Gymnasium. We'll have the national anthem and starting lineups next here on Spuds TV. It's the Islanders and the Spuds coming up. Again, spot concession stands are located in the entryway area of the new gymnasium. Popcorn, pizza, hot dogs, soda, water, other items for sale at the spot concession stand. And again, a special thank you to Nicole from Sanford for her orthopedic and sports medicine coverage at all of our home athletic contests this winter season. Given this time, ladies and gentlemen, you all please rise and direct your attention toward our American flag as we honor our member of the flag of our national anthem by the Moore High School Pep Band.
It is just about game time here at the new Moorhead Gymnasium. And Riley, this is going to be an exciting game. Two teams destined for greatness, and it's all going to come down to one game tonight. Yeah, like we said, it's a championship matchup. It's always a lot of fun when you're playing for a championship. And what better way to do it than opening up the new gym here? I mean, this thing is fantastic. I, uh, I got to say, I, I'm pretty darn jealous that I never got to play here. Uh, but it's just great for the community. I'm hoping that to see a good crowd tonight, just like there was last night for the closing down of the old gym. And uh, it's, it's a pretty special evening. And like you said, two good basketball teams going at it. I think Moorhead's just trying to kind of sign up, get their groove rolling. I think that's kind of what last night was, hopefully, for them. I think that's what they found, is maybe playing that zone defense, ignite the offense and transition, and then having it work less out of the half-court offense can free up the offense again and create some more scoring. And for De La Salle, I think they're just going to come in and play their game. After watching what Moorhead did last night, you can't shy away from the zone. You can't be scared of it. I think that they're going to know that's coming, and they're going to look forward to trying to attack that because playing against a zone, well, it can work a lot for the defense. It can also be really fun for an offensive player if you're able to find the nooks and crannies in that thing and expose it in certain parts. So should be a really fun game. Two really talented teams, and uh, I think this one's going to live up to the hype. I think it will too, Riley. And let's go over these starting lines for both squads, starting with the Islanders. For James Fassett's squad, it'll be Anisha Scott, followed by Madeline Blaylark, Ariana Maester, Dylan Tubbs, and Jordan Johnson. And for Tom Dryberg's Moorhead Spuds, it'll be the same as last night, Annie Haran, Tori Hagen, Ava Redding, Kira Swanson, and Julia McAdams. And this starting five for the Spuds is dangerous in a ton of ways, especially defensively with their two tall players, Annie Horan and Julia McAdams. Yeah, I think that's a key thing to mention there, Thomas, because after looking back at the game last night and kind of thinking about it more, it was pretty clear what Tom Dryberg was doing with the zone. We mentioned how he put it on, took it off. I, I think it has a lot to do with Annie Horan being at the top of that zone. Like you said, she's able to move around, but also the length that she provides at the top of the zone. That's really the key to that 3-2 zone is taking away those passing lanes. And if you're able to put Horan at the top of the zone, take away some of those passing lanes, it's not quite effective where maybe you have Avery Marcourt in the middle of that zone, a uh, 5'8 freshman compared to a 6'2 point guard and a more experienced player. So I think that's something to keep an eye on. But yes, this starting five last night, they didn't get off to the start they wanted. I think that's going to be a key tonight is getting off to a better start. And I think another key that people maybe aren't thinking about, new gym, new backdrop. I'd expect the shooting percentages to go down, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Anytime you're playing in a new gym, especially with, the best way to explain it is, before there was a wall right behind the gym, right behind the hoop. Now there's just empty space. It takes some time to, to get used to. I can speak from experience after changing up gyms and back-to-back -back games. So if, if you see a lot of missed shots and you're thinking at home, why aren't they making them? I can tell you that's probably a reason why, but right. you never know, sometimes beginner's luck with a new gym, that might also work out. Absolutely, and good news, no wire. No that, wire that this right. time. Oh my goodness, thank you for pointing it out. <laughs> that is absolutely right, there's no wire coming up in front of the hoop. That is, uh, it's a good thing for everyone, I can tell you that. Absolutely, and tip off is just about underway. McAdams will tip it for the Spuds. Dylan Tubbs will tip it for the Islanders. And off we go with the Holiday Tournament Finals. Haran gets the feed from Redding over to Hagen on the wing, guarded well by Maester. 
Here is Swanson, nice feed inside to Horan, slicing her way to the cup, won't go, tries to get her own miss, and rebounded by De La Salle. De La Salle trying to get off to the hot start. In the corner is Maester, kick it on the wing, over to Blaylark, guarded by Swanson on the wing. Kick out in the corner for Tubbs. And there's the suffocating defense Moore has been wanting to show in front of this home crowd. Fight for the ball on the baseline, one there. Here's a three on the wing and it's good. And a good start for the Islanders. The Spuds are gonna go to that 3-2 zone, but that time it wasn't Haran at the top, it was actually Kira Swanson at the top of the zone, but they are gonna play that to start here. On this end of the floor, the biggest thing I've noticed compared to last night, De La Salle's gonna get up and pressure the ball a little bit more than the Rebels did. Here's McAdams driving inside, and that won't go. Rebound Tubbs. Some aggressive play so far from the Islanders. As they look to take advantage here, kick out on the corner to Blaylark. Here's a deep three, and it's off the mark from Anisha Scott and out of bounds. Well, that shot is going to be there no matter the defense they're playing. They're going to let her shoot that distance. Now, if she's able to make them and bring them out of the zone, that's the one thing that we're in a man-to-man -man defense. You might be out pressuring that a little bit more compared to a zone. So if the Islanders are able to hit deep shots, probably going to suck Tom Dryberg and force them out of that zone. Here's Redding. Guarded well, dish to McAdams, kick out to Swanson. Wide open in the corner, and it rattles home, and we're tied at three. Able to match up with the three from Anisha Scott, and the game's tied at three. Well, last night they led us on the floor after the commissioning ceremony, and there's softer rims in this gym, I'll tell you, than there was in the old gym. You just saw it another, on another shot right there, and you saw it on the three in the corner. They're just a little softer. That's all there is to it. Here's Redding's pass inside to make Adams, and she's fouled going for the shot. She'll get two free throws. That's a really good pass from Redding. She thought about a three, and that three-pointer is probably going to be there whenever she wants it. She turned a good shot into a great shot, get the chance to go to the free throw line. And this team has a very selfless mindset all around as McAdams will hit the first free throw, her first points of the night. Now the soft rims don't matter if you just don't hit them, right? <laughs> nothing but net. Nothing but net indeed. McAdams looking to make free throw number two. And she does on the lucky bounce. 5-3 spuds. You can see the spuds back in this three-quarter court press. They used that last night a lot. And almost exploited by De La Salle. But the defense ended up working regardless. Haran somehow able to recover it in the corner. Just to McAdams. She's able to recover it. She's caught in a straight jacket. Gets out of trouble. Over to Hagen on the wing. Here's Haran. Now McAdams. Back to Swanson. Shot clock at 13. Here's Hagen. Oh, a, a nice dish inside to McAdams. She's unable to finish. Rebound Tubbs. Here come the Islanders the other way. Oh, what a nice feed. Zipping it on the baseline to Blaylark. Here's a corner three, and it's a little short. Redding tried saving it, and it's out of bounds on her. It'll stay with De La Salle. And there's two ways to beat the zone, really. One is beating it down the floor, which the Islanders have already done, getting them in transition, and two is offensive rebounding, another thing they have also done. So Tom is gonna have to watch that, but that time the zone confused him on the out of bounds and got the five second call. And it worked to perfection there. Tom Dryberg, a defensive mastermind so far in this game. And here comes Andy Haran. Haran finds Swanson. Redding with the screen. And a foul. That'll go against Anisha Scott. Her first foul of the game. And Swanson will inbound. Islanders are going to get up and pressure like that and may, might pick up a few fouls. That's something they can live with because they're going to probably create some turnovers throughout the night. It's kind of the way they want to play defense is get up in your face. And on top of that, they're going to be back cuts available for Moorhead on the flip side. Good effort from Haran to feed it to McAdams inside, but even better defense by, from De La Salle. And the pass goes out of bounds. And it'll be Ariana Maester 
to inbound for the Islanders. Here is Scott, guarded by Haran. Kick out on the corner for Maya McNeil, who's checked into the game. Kick out to Blaylark, inside to Maester. Deflected by McAdams, intercepted by Redding. Here come the Spuds. They put on the brakes. Here's Haran, driving baseline. She can't finish. Here comes Scott in transition, guarded heavily by Haran. Kick out in the corner to Blaylark. Some good ball movement here from the Islanders, and that three is off, but rebounded by Scott. Here is Maester. Kick out wide open three, book it. A good answer from the Islanders, and they have their first lead since taking a three nothing lead early in the first half. That's just kind of the tail of the zone right there in two possessions. The last one before that, McAdams got the tip. They got out in transition. That time, unable to get a rebound, and it resulted in a wide-open three-pointer. That's just kind of what you're going to get, and you got to live with both the good and the bad. Absolutely, and the Spuds look to answer here. Haran takes a three. Why not? It's good! Annie Haran from downtown, and it's 8-6. After having a big game last night against the Rebels, why not take a deep three? And stolen by Redding. Redding trying to get free. Wants McAdams. Heavy defense by Blaylark. Fight for the ball, won by Blaylark at the end. Kick out near the corner. Driving inside and a foul. If you're Moorhead on the offensive side of the ball, if you're going to pick up your dribble, you got to know exactly where you're going with it. Can't get back on your heels because the Islanders are going to be up pressuring. And on the, when they got going down in transition, they're able to get to the free throw line for their first two attempts of the night. Anisha Scott makes her first. Five foot seven junior. And a lot of even height on this Islanders roster. And to be honest, like, it's helped them quite a bit in this game. And height doesn't necessarily matter at the end of the day as long as you're able to make those big defensive plays and stay aggressive all around. You have a chance to win games, and that's what De La Salle has done over the course of the season. Absolutely, and you can just see a, their defensive presence right there. Now travel from Torrey Hagan, they just get up and pressure. You see so many coaches, they encourage that just because it makes the offense uncomfortable. That's a word you'll hear throughout the night. They just become uncomfortable, takes them out of their action in the half-court offense. And De La Salle is excelling at it right now. Here is Scott. Kick out in the corner. McNeil was wide open, decides to pass it instead inside as it rattles home for Dylan Tubbs. Or excuse me, that's Jordan Johnson on the score there. Her first bucket of the game. Here is Marquardt. Pass to Swanson, top of the key. Bouncing pass inside to McAdams. She's double teamed. And the reverse is no good. Rebound Johnson. And here come the Islanders. Here's the two. Rebound there by Charlie Zimmerman. Some heavy defense on the far side by Anisha Scott. Zimmerman looking for help. Finds Marquard. Marquard with the handles. Looking for Swanson. A great effort, but it's intercepted. And a foul. I would assume right now Tom Dryberg's telling his team you can't put the ball above your head. It's such a natural reaction when someone's up in your face to put it above your head, but guess what? You put it above your head, they're going to get more in that bubble, in that space. And so that's going to be something to monitor throughout the night, how more it is able to be strong with the ball, move it and make cuts effectively and with purpose. Because right now you can see what happens when they don't, when they're not strong with the ball, the Islanders are eating them up. And the Islanders looking to take a bigger lead here. Oh, what a nice fake there to put the Islanders up four. Yeah, that's Anisha Scott, and I've really liked her game so far. She's getting after on the defensive end. She's running the show on the offensive end, getting her team out in transition, and that time takes it herself. She's played a really good basketball game here just seven minutes in. And she really has, Riley, as the Spuds are off to a slow start, not the start they want, but Haran looking to bring them closer. That floater's no good. And here comes De La Salle. 
Kick out of the top of the key. Anisha Scott again. This time it's no good. Here is Storks. And it's picked up by Redding. She dumps it off to Haran, who will control for Moorhead. Swanson the drive. Kick out to Hagen. And it's stolen. Intercepted. Here comes Anisha Scott in transition, and she finishes. Anisha Scott with a very nifty defensive play and a timeout called by Tom Dryberg, and he wants to talk it over. And I like the timeout there from Dryberg simply because last night, I don't think Moorhead saw this type of defensive intensity from DGF. That's just not the way they want to play. Now you come into tonight, it's a completely different ball game. De La Salle's going to get up in your face. That's how they want to play defense. And right now, you just got to be telling this team, you got to be tough with the ball. That's what it's all about. And you, it's so hard to simulate and practice just because there's nothing like game like reps. And so you can try and say, you know, they're going to be physical. They're going to come up and pressure. And the scout, they may have known that coming in. But it's just so hard to replicate and practice. And you can see they started out pretty okay with it. But now it's just relentless pressure. And that's why you pressure so hard if you're De La Salle. Because it might not be the first possession. It might not even be the fifth. But throughout the course of a game, you're going to get turnovers that lead to easy buckets like we saw from Scott. And this defense from De La Salle has definitely got Morehead on its heels. And... Hopefully Dryberg has drawn something up that will lead to better things to come as Marquard finds Redding, who is double teamed. She drives baseline. Kick out to Swanson. Swanson drives on Moses. Here's Haran, corner three. It's good. A good answer from Haran. And it's 14 to 11 on the Northwest Blind scoreboard. I think part of it, too, it's not always the person with the ball that needs to be strong with it. You have to have cutters away from the ball. Starks a three, and that's good. Taylor Starks with her first three of the night, and it's, or excuse me, that was a two as her foot was on the line. 16 to 11, De La Salle. Swanson drives, or excuse me, that's Zimmerman. And a jump ball. It'll go the other way. If the Islanders can hit shots from the outside, they, it seems like the Spuds are pretty content with letting them shoot. Um, that might change at halftime. That might change after a timeout. But as it stands right now, they seem to want to defend the paint and play outside of that. If they're able to knock down shots, I think they're going to find a lot of success. And then after the shots, even on a, if they don't make it, it's going to be about the Spuds finding a way to rebound. In a wide open lane, the defense for the Spuds was caught napping. And De La Salle took advantage. That was Layla Moses on the drive to the cup. Maybe a miscommunication looked like maybe some of the girls thought they were in zone, some in man-to-man, -man, and wound up in an easy bucket. Here's McAdams trying to find an option. Is swarmed. Just suffocating defense from the Islanders. And a jump ball. And it's so hard if, you're, if you don't have the ball. But when you don't have the ball, you have to continuously cut. It can't be one cut to get open. It has to be continuously moving, trying to get open, because they might not see you on the first cut. That's just the way it is. And so that's what Moritz facing right now. We'll see how they can adapt throughout the ball game. Haran with some nice moves over to Redding. That's a two, and it's good. Ava Redding with a two to bring the Spuds to within five. On the feed from Haran, Haran will get an assist. And those long skip passes will be there because the thought process from De La Salle is they're going to be up in their face enough they can't make those passes. So if the Spuds are able to be strong with the ball and skip it side to side, they're going to get open looks. Here's the drive. Good defense there by the Spuds. Haran will recover. 8-18 left to play here in the first half. Haran drives off the glass. No good. Rebound Starks. Anisha Scott's just absolutely taking away the right hand of Annie Haran right now, making her go left. And that jumper's no good. Scott almost got an assist. And it'll be Spud's ball. So it'll be interesting to see now how Haran plays it. She knows they're not going to let her go to the right. Does she try and go left and cross back over to the right? Does she just go in with the left? And on top of that, when she got into the lane, you saw three or four white jerseys all around her. There's going to be some open lanes for her to pass out and hit some outside shots. Marquardt dish to Redding. Redding wanted Swanson on the cut. Instead, will have to do it herself. Redding, here's Charlie Zimmerman. 
McAdams able to recover inside, and she's going to go up and get fouled. That pass is intended for Marquardt. Luckily, McAdams was there to recover, and two free throws coming up for number 34. And like you said, it wasn't necessarily even for Julia McAdams, but when you cut, good things happen. The ball seems to find you. McAdams is doing a nice job of she's not opening the post. She's relocating up to that top of the key high post area. At 10, the ball just found her and a good take to the rim, and it gets the first free throw. So just that's a microcosm of what they need to do. They have to cut to open spaces. Good things will happen. The ball will find you when a team pressures like this. If you continuously cut, you're going to make a nice living this evening. McAdams, one of one so far. Now two for two in this sequence. She's four for four from the line tonight. And it's 18 to 15 Islanders with 7.37 left to play on the Northwest Blind scoreboard. Pass over to Maester. Now Tubbs driving baseline. Intercepted by Marquard. There's the zone defense that Dryberg loves so much. Here's an open look, Redding off the mark. Strong rebound by Tubbs. And a good drive to the bucket, and it's good. That was Maester ahead of the pack for the Islanders, and they, and they lead 20 to 15. Redding with a nice fake. She drives inside. Marquardt, open look, three. Strong rebound there. And here come the Islanders in transition. Anisha Scott guarded by Swanson. Back to Scott. Pass inside. And good defense by McAdams. She blocked it again, but she'll be called for the foul. And that was Johnson going up strong. And like you said, it was good defense on the first one. Then McAdams went for the second one, got a little more handsy, swung at the ball, and that's where they got the foul. But that's how you're going to want to beat the zone if you're the Islanders, is get the ball down into the post, and either you're going to have a post opportunity like Johnson had that time, or it's going to result in the zone collapsing down and a kickout chance. For Moorhead right now on the offensive end, I'm loving the way they're getting inside of that pressure. That they've, so far, the Islanders have been able to keep them outside the three-point line. When they've gotten inside, found cutters, they've either had open looks at the rim or open shots from outside. Now it's about finishing. Annie Horan facing some light press defense. Almost intercepted. Wide open to the cup is Charlie Zimmerman. Nobody on the other half of the court, and the Spuds are down four. Yeah, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. That's exactly what De La Salle wanted them to do, is throw the ball that far and just able to find the hands of Charlie Zimmerman. Now a quick shot, and here come the Spuds. Here comes Hagen down the, down the lane, and she finishes. Basketball is in her blood. As we know, her older brother, Colton Hagen, plays basketball at Concordia and was a very talented player on varsity last year and a couple years before. And a foul is going to be called, or excuse me, a travel. And it'll be Spud's ball and momentum starting to shift, Riley. Well, I was kind of with you. I thought it might have been a foul. They like to go with the travel. Maybe the travel came before the foul. But like you said, the Spuds now, you can just see the toughness is growing. That's why you play these teams in these tournaments, why you want to play good teams, because you can just see them with every possession. You're getting more and more comfortable. Another chance right there, not shying away from contact, going right through it. Swanson ties the game at 21 with a nice drive to the cup. And the Spuds have totally changed things here. Some good ball movement from the Islanders. That three is off the back of the iron and out of bounds. The other way it will go. So that's why you put on the three-quarter court pressure. A lot of people think it is for just a steal, which that is what it's for. You're trying to get a steal, but at the same time, you're forcing the Islanders to take quick shots out of rhythm, out of control. And they might be open shots, but they're just sped up. And that's what the three-quarter court pressure does. Here's Hagen on the drive. Good defense there from Johnson. And a nice zip pass inside. Good defense there by Redding. Zimmerman there to pick it up. Here comes Haran in transition. Driving baseline, no good. Rebound, Johnson, and a foul. I think if Haran had to do it again, she would have got to a jump stop, played off of two feet, and figured out kind of her surroundings. At least she might have forced that one up a little bit. A pretty tough shot going to the baseline, but I like what the Spuds are doing on the defensive end right now. You saw they got beat that last time down the floor, but they still got back and recovered. Earlier on in the game, they weren't recovering like that. The Islanders were getting easy buckets. That's what it's going to take is full-on effort as well as execution. Here's Johnson, kickoff pass in the corner, three for Moses, and it's off the mark. 
Swanson there recover. Nice dish to Horan in transition. She drives off the glass. No good rebound, Johnson. That was a good looking opportunity for the Spuds to take the lead. But the Islanders catch a break. 440 left in the first half. Intercepted by Hagen. A bad pass leads to a turnover. Hagen slows it down. Pass to Horan. Baseline. Kick out Swanson. Good ball movement from the Spuds. Reading three. It's good. Textbook ball movement from Tom Dryberg's offense. And the Spuds have a 24-21 lead. That is beautiful basketball. And you don't let, they never let the defense get set quickly passing it around the arc. Found a wide open three-pointer at the top of the key. That's what Tom Dryberg is looking for. His girls being tough with the ball and resulting in an easy look. Islanders trying to get back on track as they're down three. Kick out in the corner. Top of the key now. Here's a three for the tie off the mark. And they'll get the put back and it's a one point game. It's so tough to rebound in that zone because naturally Jordan Johnson, the offensive player, is going to have inside position when that ball gets swung to the outside like that. So boxing out can be a challenge and they know that when they're playing that zone. Here's Horan on the drive and she'll finish. She is so confident going downhill and it's because of her height and not only that, but she's having a hot hand right now after a big game last night. And some good defense from Redding and she gets it back, dishes it to Zimmerman, ahead of the court, intercepted that time. Right place at the right time was Moses, she drives and finishes. That's good defense from Annie Haran, really did everything she could do, but just better offense from Layla Moses going all the way down and putting it in. It's a really fun basketball game right now, up and down. This is how it's supposed to be played in a championship game. Absolutely, and in the first game of the new gym as well, a three, card! Charlie Zimmerman makes it a four point lead for the Spuds, a deep three. And some better defense there. Horan with it, trying to get free. Over to Hagen. Hagen loses the handle for a moment, gets it back. Finds Charlie Zimmerman baseline. Zips it to Redding, three. Rebound Johnson. And here comes Anisha Scott for De La Salle. And a timeout will be called by Coach Fassett. The Spuds getting to work late in the first half. And Riley, you gotta admit, it is awesome seeing this Spuds team rebound every time they get off to a slow start. Absolutely, early on in this game, it looked like the pressure was going to get to them. The Islanders were gonna have their way on the defensive end. Well, since then, Tom Driver's got his girls to play tougher. They've played more together. You, so you can see it's five, five people working around the offensive zone to get a good look, opposed to just one trying to get to the rim by herself. So it's been fantastic to see. Now it's about continuing that. They have a lead. Now you gotta build off that because you can't imagine the Islanders are gonna go down easy. That, you are absolutely right about that, Riley. 29-25 here on the Northwest Blind scoreboard when we return from this timeout. Before I became a real boy, life was easy. I just sat there doing sandwich stuff. But being alive is so hard. So if you don't want to get up to get a sandwich, you shouldn't have to. What? 29, 25 spuds coming out of the De La Salle timeout. And a few three pointers from the spuds. And some excellent defense, zone defense has led us to where we are right now. 2.15 left to play in the first half. Islanders looking for a response. Kick out inside. Good defense from Haran. She gets a block as Starks tried to go up for the deuce. I said, it, I said it last night, Tom. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. The last two minutes of this half feels like it's gonna be really big in terms of who's gonna come out on top of this one. If the Spuds are able to at least keep the lead right now or even expand upon it, go into the second half with some momentum, or if that timeout from the Islanders can give them a spark and possibly get this thing tied or even take the lead. Good pass from Zimmerman to Haran. She finds Redding on the wing. Haran puts up a three. That is short. Hagen trying to go up for the rebound. 
And here come the Islanders. Here's a three from the wing, short. Hagen there for the rebound. Pass up ahead to Charlie Zimmerman. Almost deflected and stolen. Here's Horan. Reading a good look, nice fake. Driving baseline, off the glass and it goes. Six point cushion for the Spuds. A smart play from Redding. She thought about the three, but an unselfish bat, a selfless basket from Redding. Yeah, she's done that a couple times now. Shot fake, get her defender in the air. And what I like is a lot of players try and just relocate for a better three. She went all the way to the rim. A tough physical take and a really nice play. And here is Redding with the ball. Finds Swanson on the wing. Swanson drives and she'll be fouled as she tried driving uphill, or downhill, excuse me. And we are just under a minute left to play here in the first half. The first real baseline out of bounds opportunity for Tom Dryberg here. We'll see what he elects to go with. We'll see some players moving around. If they try and get a bucket off this or just get it in and play off of it. Mark Harlow inbound, blocked, and it'll go the other way. Terrific defense from Anisha Scott as she blocked the inbound pass from Marquard. And it was just Marquardt's instinct. She saw the ball coming at her and she caught it. And right as she did, she realized she was out of bounds, obviously. She should have just let it go. But like you said, a good defensive play. Just under 50 seconds left here in the first half. Here's a three from Scott. Off the mark. McNeil for the rebound. Here's an open look. Two is good from Taylor Starks. She was in her own zip code there. 31-27. Here is Marquard, 30 seconds, poked away, picked up by Zimmerman. And it's deflected and intercepted. Here come the Islanders, in transition, no good. Fight for the ball, blocked by Swanson, and she'll be called for the foul. That time the Spuds just got beat down the floor, simply put, and it wasn't the first layup, wasn't even the second one. But eventually, the Islanders earned themselves a trip to the line and what looked like was going to be a nice lead for the Spuds going into the halftime break. De La Salle's come back with a few buckets and a chance to cut it to a two-point game. First three throw is no good from Starks. Starks has four points on the night. Horan back in as well as McAdams. 14 seconds left. Shot clock is off. Spuds have looked fantastic in the late going here in the first half. They have plenty of time to end the half on a high note. Marquard looking for options, finds Horan. Zimmerman there at the perfect time, five seconds. Horan has to hurry, and they won't be able to get a shot off. Terrific defense in the last 14 seconds from the Islanders, but the Spuds going into halftime with a 31-28 lead on the Northwest Blind scoreboard. And Riley, this game has definitely lived up to expectations. It has. It's everything you could ask for in a championship game, three-point game at halftime. And what I'm going to look for here in the second half is usually you say it's about getting stops. I think in this game it's going to be who can execute better on offense and who can make more shots down the stretch. The Islanders have had open shots, haven't hit a lot of them, but they're getting consistent open looks from outside. I think that Spuds will be okay with giving them those looks. They're going to be there in the second half. On the flip side of that, the Spuds, it's just going to be a constant theme throughout the night, how they handle the intensity and the pressure from the Islanders on that side of the floor. If they're able to calm down, play off of two feet, have constant cutting motion, they can get buckets, and we've seen that. It's when they get out of control and try to make the hero play, like we saw the last minute or so, that's when they run into trouble. So I'm really looking forward to the second half. Should be fun, and this is what you expect playing for a championship. Absolutely, Riley. I am looking forward to it as much as you are, and a lot of these other fans are. 31-28 Spuds going into halftime. is a small business owner. She is swamped. Pam knows she needs to advertise, but is overwhelmed by all the options. What if there was a way for Pam to have access to a team of media experts? What if this was at no extra cost and didn't require a contract? Meet Avenue Right. Save time, money, and get peace of mind that your advertising dollars are well spent.
Valley Alignment and Auto Repair has provided the FM area with vehicle service and repairs since 1978. They perform your vehicle service needs from oil changes and brakes to transmission and engine rebuilds. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair is a proud sponsor of Spuds Athletics and wish all the athletes and families a great 2022-23 school year and sports season. Don't work out where you won't work out. Blueprint Personal Training. At Blueprint, you'll work directly with an experienced personal trainer and nutrition coach in our brand new private gym. Tell us about your fitness goals, and we'll provide the personalized workouts and motivation to get the results you want to see. Training, nutrition, accountability. Blueprint Personal Training. BlueprintFargo.com. Moorhead Dental Associates, you'll get the very best care and state-of-the-art technology. Dr. Scatfold and Dr. Johnson are now accepting new patients. Call or stop in to Moorhead Dental Associates. We are The Breakdown. For almost two decades, we've published the most comprehensive yearbooks on Minnesota high school sports and run the best in-season and off-season events. We cover every corner of the state. We are The Breakdown. Boss DXT snowplows are tough to beat. Featuring dual trip tech, flared wings, and optional D-force for improved scraping and backdragging performance. Choose from three different sizes in steel, stainless steel, and poly. The Boss DXT is built to restore order. Your home for Boss snowplows is Burt's Truck Equipment on Highway 75 North and Moorhead. Hi, I'm Katie with First Community Credit Union, and we're here in Fargo, North Dakota at Bailey's PDR. So what made you choose FCCU for your business needs? I love the customer support that they give, that I have people's phone numbers that I can reach whenever I need to. Uh, when you're conducting business, you don't have hours to hopefully make up a, a financial decision, so sometimes you need those questions answered, and at FCCU, they're there always for you. To show up to work every day, it's not a job. It's not just a paycheck. It ultimately is a way of life. And to add 
said that extra smile in someone's day is what gets me to work every day and in return to just receive those smiles and those thank yous or those squeezes of your hand is so meaningful and it really brings me back every day. Thirty-one twenty-eight coming out of halftime. The Spuds lead over the De La Salle Islanders. And Riley, you gotta admit, like we said before, going into halftime, this game has lived up to expectations. The Spuds got off to a slow start, but they were able to pick up the pieces later in the half. They were. They did a really nice job of being tough with the basketball. Then they really you could see that growing throughout the half. Now they kind of had a bit of a relapse at the end, and they weren't so tough with the basketball. It's going to be interesting to see what the message was at halftime for Coach Tom Dreiberg. I'm guessing they talked a lot about that pressure of the De La Salle defense. The Islanders are getting up in the face of the Spuds right now. On the flip side, though, they've played some pretty good defense in that zone. De La Salle, towards the end, kind of started to figure out if they get the ball inside and kick it back out. They have open looks. And on top of that, there have been, they were very effective on the offensive glass throughout the evening in the first half. And so if they're able to continue that, I would expect Moorhead maybe to have to drop back into a man-to-man -man defense. But so far, both teams very evenly matched. And I, I said it once, I'll say it again. This is how a championship game is supposed to be. And it's a lot of fun here opening up the new gym. Championship atmosphere with no wires, thankfully. And <laughs> despite there being no wires, De La Salle has struggled from the field a little bit. They've gotten the good looks they've needed, but they just can't seem to hit their shots. And we'll see if that'll change in this second half. And we'll see what James Fassett has in store offensively for his squad. And De La Salle will start out with possession as Anisha Scott will take it out. She has showed herself, she has showed everybody that she is a star player on the court. And some good ball movement here, but even better defense from the Spuds. Jump ball fought for by McAdams. And it will go the other way. And that's just another prime example of how dangerous Julia McAdams really is in the paint. She is, not she's going to be big this second half, like I said. When you have someone that has that presence in the post, it not only takes her, but it takes everyone to rebound. But she's going to be a big part of it. Here's Haran on the wing. Guarded well. Pass to McAdams. McAdams looking around. Kick out to Redding. Redding pumps. Pitches it to Swanson. Back to Redding. Shot clock at 10. McAdams inside. And that one's blocked by Tubbs. Good defense from her. And here comes Scott in transition. 
De La Salle trying to get something going offensively. They've gotten the looks, but they haven't been able to hit the shots. This time they do, as that is Ariana Maester. First bucket of the half for either team. And that pass is out of bounds. And a quick turnover for the Spuds and, another, and a quick timeout for Tom Dryberg as you see him getting his team under control. I think that's a good timeout just immediately, you know, as a reminder, coming out of halftime, you don't want to let this thing spiral out of control and let De La Salle get a lead. But what you're seeing right now from the Islanders, it must have been a little bit of a halftime adjustment, but they're getting the ball inside the zone. That short corner spot is going to be open. You just have to be willing to move and get there and then find your teammate when they get to that spot. And so the Islanders are kind of figuring out the zone, so that might be just a message right now of, hey, we have to shore up that zone, but at the same time be strong with the ball. That was just a careless turnover and giving De La Salle essentially a free possession. And the Spuds have been pretty good defensively overall as the three-quarter zone has worked a, a lot throughout this game. Certainly worked last night. And Swanson will guard Anisha Scott on the far side. Here's a good looking three from Tubbs. Short, strong rebound by Maester. Put back is no good. Fight for it, one by Redding. Redding catches a double team and a shove against De La Salle and Swanson will inbound. That was good defense by the Islanders but it leads to a foul and almost taken away there by Scott. She has been everywhere on the court. Here's Haran. Haran directing traffic. Wants Hagen on the cut, can't find her. But she finds McAdams, whose shot is blocked, but a foul. And McAdams will shoot free throws once again. That resulted in a foul and McAdams going to the free throw line, but not really the best possession from the Spuds. They seem to be a little disoriented. The ball kind of flying everywhere. You're going to want to just calm down, play off of two feet, and play with the ball on your chin. Don't put it above your head like I mentioned in the first half. Get that ball right to your chin. Be strong with it. If you're able to make assertive cuts and assertive moves with the basketball, you're going to back up the defense naturally. If you play passive with it, they're going to get it more in your face, and that kind of fuels their fire. McAdams has been perfect from the line as she hits both. 33-30 spuds with 16-13 left on the Northwest Blind scoreboard. Swanson, good defense on the far side on Scott. Scott's pass over to Blaylark, a three is off the mark. Strong board from Redding. Spuds in transition, kick out to Haran. She'll try a three. No good, strong rebound by Scott. Zips it ahead, and the finish. Beautiful pass from Anisha Scott, and Dylan Tubbs was right there for the score. Once again, the Islanders just beating the Spuds down the floor. Redding, good looking three. Off the mark. Rebound De La Salle. That was Ariana Maester. Scott with another good feed. Corner three. Rebound Hagen picked up by Haran. Up ahead to McAdams. In transition. No call. Revs are letting him play. Scott with another great defensive play. Oh, what a nice fake by Scott. The shot doesn't go. And a foul. It'll go the other way. I gotta tell you, Anisha Scott has been making the moves on these spuds all throughout the game and on both sides of the ball. She has, and for the most part, she's been a facilitator and a passer, but she has shown multiple times now when she wants to go to the hoop herself, she has every ability to do that. I just kind of wonder throughout the course of a game, maybe as it gets down more into crunch time and it gets down to bucket making time. Maybe she becomes more assertive and becomes that scorer for De La Salle instead of just a facilitator. Spuds able to get it ahead. Here's Marquard driving inside and she's fouled by Dylan Tubbs going to the rack and she'll get two. And Tubbs is looking at the referee because she got clean up top with the ball and while she did, a lot of body down low and I think a lot of fouls are called that way and it's easy just to look at it and say, oh, there was a clean block, but that's the referee's job is to see the whole play. And that time she just kind of checked out Marquardt with the body and resulted in the foul. And Marquardt is just such a fearless and tenacious player, and she's only a freshman at 5'8". 
And this is a game that's going to be a big building block for not only the team, but for a player like Marcourt, a freshman, kind of still getting into the groove of varsity basketball. De La Salle is probably one of the better teams that Spuds are going to play throughout the year, especially in terms of physical defense. And so it's an eye-opening experience, I'm sure, for a freshman to be playing in this type of atmosphere. Here's a good three, good-looking three from Anisha Scott, and it's no good. Charlie Zimmerman gets out of traffic. Marquardt up ahead to Hagen. Hagen, pass inside, McAdams. Better defense from the Islanders. Here is Scott in transition. Three from the wing. I believe that was blocked on the shot there as it was just short of the rim. Rebound McAdams, Haran will control. Haran looked to pick up the screen from Charlie Zimmerman. Instead, will pass to Marquardt. Marquard back to Haran. Marquard over to Charlie Zimmerman. Inside McAdams, great defense that time by Johnson. And a fight for it. Anisha Scott ends up with the ball, zips it ahead. Inside for the score, Ariana Maester was waiting for the pass from Anisha Scott and the game is tied. And the Spuds right now in defensive transition, they're doing a little bit too much of watching the ball instead of sprinting to get back. Hagen tried feeding it to McAdams inside. Here comes Anisha Scott once again. Another nice fake from Anisha Scott as she finds. That was Maya McNeil on the basket. Haran looking to answer. That shot short. Here comes Scott in transition once again. Marquardt chasing her. Kick out, wide open three. Good! Big shot by Ariana Maester. And a timeout called by Dryberg. And again, Scott just playing under control. She never looks out of control. And she gets down the floor, plays off of two feet, gets in the lane, kicks it out for three. And right now she has got everything going for her, whether it's getting to the cup and scoring or finding her teammates. A 39-34 lead for the Islanders when we return from this Spuds timeout. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair has provided the FM area with vehicle service and repairs since 1978. They perform your vehicle service needs from oil changes and brakes, to transmission and engine rebuilds. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair is a proud sponsor of Spuds Athletics and wish all the athletes and families a great 2022-23 school year and sports season. Thirty-nine, thirty-four, De La Salle as Anisha Scott leading the charge for her Islanders, and they are looking very, very solid in these last couple of minutes, Riley. They are, and like you said, Scott is leading that charge right now. She's been fantastic throughout, and you saw it was just kind of the way she plays basketball. She got going down in transition, jump stop, could have easily scored herself. Instead, looks for her teammate, an easier basket. She also got the steal on that play. She's been fantastic leading the way. The Spuds are gonna have to find a way to slow her down. Haran looking to speed things up for the Spuds. Here is Zimmerman, back out to Haran. Haran guarded by Scott. Haran in trouble, and a miscommunication on the pass, and a backcourt violation. I know Tom Dryberg doesn't do a ton of it in his offense, the Spuds don't. Maybe a ball screen, maybe an off ball screen. I know that's not necessarily the way they always wanna play, but sometimes a ball screen can force that pressure to come off and get a mismatch as to where maybe Annie Haran coming off the screen can take advantage. Here is Scott, bounce pass inside to Maester. Now the floater is good from Layla Moses, and it's a seven point lead for the Islanders. Here's Marquard. Marquard, bounce pass to Haran. Horan in trouble, finds McAdams, top of the key, over to Marquardt. Shot clock at 16, Marquardt caught a double team, bats it to Zimmerman, here's Marquardt. No good, strong rebound from Horan and she finishes. 
Right place at the right time was Annie Haran, and she cuts the lead to five. That's a strong play, like you said, from Annie Haran, just going up and getting herself a bucket. The Spuds staying in that zone, but more of a 2-3 than a 3-2 now, with three on the bottom, two on the top. Just a different look again from Tom Dryberg trying to slow down the Islanders as they're on a bit of a run. And the defense caught napping again. Layla Moses putting it off the glass with the right hand. 43-36 on the Northwest Blind scoreboard. Here's Marquard looking around. Kick out to McAdams. McAdams in trouble. And a double dribble on McAdams. It'll go the other way. And she got going and she saw all the open floor in front of her, but unfortunately, of course, she had already used her dribble. I mentioned at halftime, it's gonna be who can score more and execute better on the offensive end. Right now, clearly the Islanders are the team doing that. They've looked much different offensively this half. They're making shots, but also they're playing inside out and getting easier looks at the rim. Here's a feed from Moses all the way to McNeil. And a bump from Zimmerman as she was guarding Anisha Scott near the half court line. And the first foul called on Zimmerman. Zimmerman on Scott once again. Kick out to McNeil. Here's Scott in the corner for Moses. Back to Scott. Inside from the free throw line off the glass. No good. Rebound Swanson. And a good look. Just another missed shot from the Islanders. Here's Redding. And it's almost stolen away by Moses. Zimmerman somehow gets it back. And a little sloppy passing there as she tried getting it to Hagen on the baseline. And it's out of bounds. And it's the right idea, just a really tough angle for that pass to Hagen. That's what the Spuds have to try and do is back cut and force those overplays uh, to, to cost the Islanders. Because right now they really haven't been beat. And it'll go the other way. Good defense inside from Swanson as the intended pass to Scott inside is no good. Here is Marquard. Met with the defense from Scott. Zimmerman drives near side. Off the glass, and it goes. Making it look easy was Charlie Zimmerman. And sometimes you just got to keep it simple. You do. She did a nice job getting around her defender, stopping in front of the bigger defender in front of the rim, using a little floater. And don't they say every good guard needs a floater? And she certainly has one. She definitely does, Riley, as Redding kicks it out. Zimmerman, why not? Almost wedged it. Rebound, Scott. She drives, floater is good. Anisha Scott is in her bag like the fries are at the bottom. Here's Hagen. Nice feed to Marquard. Redding across to Zimmerman. Here's Hagen. Fakes the three, drives inside, and she's fouled. Strong drive from Hagen, and she'll shoot two. And that play from Scott on the other end of the floor, like I said, when she gets a rebound on this end, they don't even have to outlet it to her. And she's just so effective going all the way 94 feet down the floor and getting a little floater. And on the other side, Tori Hagen doing a really nice job of shot faking and like what the Moorhead girls have done. They shot fake, they don't try and relocate for a three-pointer, they're shot faking to get downhill and get into the lane. She's rewarded with a couple free throws. Patient basketball indeed, Riley, on the offense for the Spuds as Hagen looks to make the second free throw, and she does. And Annie Haran is back in. Hagen will take a seat. The Spuds have went away from the three-quarter court pressure, so they're not getting up into the front court at all and pressuring the basketball. They're just dropping back into this 2-3 zone, but they've extended it with Zimmerman going out and pressuring the ball a little bit more, and I like that look from the Spuds. Good pass from Scott inside to Johnson. Here's a step back three. Rattles in and out for McNeil, and going up strong, drawing the foul was Jordan Johnson, and she'll shoot two. I said it once, I'll say it again. When you're playing in a zone, I mean really when you're playing defense of any sort, but especially in a zone, 
When the shot goes up, the work is really just starting. You gotta find a way to box out, get inside positioning, however it may be. It's probably gonna have to be someone from the opposite side of that zone coming across, because they're naturally gonna have positioning to block out. It's just one of the things that you live with when you play a zone defense, and that's just the way it's going to be. It's gonna be an effort thing. The Spud's gonna win this game. They're gonna have to win on the glass, and it starts right there with McAdams, a nice board. Here's Haran driving up court. She has 10 in the game. Here's Zimmerman. Zimmerman guarded well by Starks. She's in trouble. Long pass to Redding. She drives baseline and a shove. I was just about to comment on the Islanders defense saying they do such a nice job of using their bodies and not their hands. That's kind of one of the things you run into, but like I said from the start of the game, they're gonna live with that and getting some fouls, playing good defense. And some good rebounding there from Jordan Johnson as the Islanders take over. Here's a three from Johnson, bottom! A 10 point lead for the Islanders. Jordan Johnson delivers. Here's Haran. The Spuds are in deep water right now. Over to Swanson. Swanson guarded well by McNeil. And tried getting it to Haran who was double teamed. And it's picked up by the Islanders. And a two is short from Blaylark, and it'll stay with De La Salle. They mentioned it from the very jump of this game, is that the pressure from the Islanders' defense, you might not notice it the first few possessions. You might not notice it even in the first half. The Spuds look pretty good in the first half. But just throughout the course of a game, it weighs on a team, and it's really tough to tr constantly go against that pressure. And this half, you've seen them just really put the clamps on. The Spuds have had no answers. And right on cue, Riley, as Ariana Maester makes it a 12-point lead, the largest lead of the game for either team. Here's Haran guarded by Scott. Haran looking around. They've just had no answer here in this second half. Here's McAdams. McAdams the drive, downhill, and she's fouled. She'll go to the line once again. She is six for six from the stripe, chance to make it eight for eight. And Riley, you gotta admit, she is a very talented free throw shooter and way better than me, obviously, because <laughs> I'm not a basketball player. I try to practice, but she just does it better than anyone else I've seen. I don't know if you have a good free throw shot, but I, I believe that you do. You play basketball more than me. It's an all right free throw shot. I just didn't get there very often. I uh, didn't like necessarily like the physical aspect of the game, despite being a, a bigger player, I uh, more so like to cast it from three, so <laughs> didn't have a chance to shoot a whole lot of free throws. But with an 11 point game, possibly 10 here, waiting the second free throw, just 7.36 to play. I'd expect maybe a full court press at some point from Coach Dryberg, just try to increase the possessions in this game. Here's Haran on the putback, it's good. <laughs> Haran has 12. And here it comes, like I said, the full court press. I, Hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. <laughs> they gotta just try and create more possessions. They're gonna get some buckets off of it. But, and that's right there, that's a shot you live with if you're the Spuds, it really is. And they're gonna take a timeout here are the Islanders, I think, to kind of set up a press break, although it was effective that time, they weren't really ready for it. But the reason you press, and you might be sitting at home saying, well, they just gave up an easy basket, and they're down already by nine, now make it 11. Why would they wanna be doing that? Well, they're just trying to create more possessions in the game, speed this thing up, if, if they miss that shot, although it's a decent look, you're thinking, man, what a genius idea on the press. So Tom Dryberg's gonna live with that shot. It is what it is. If they're able to break the press like that, they're gonna get looks. But the idea is you're gonna create some turnovers. And if you don't create a turnover, the Islanders are more than likely going to shoot early on in the possession. If you let them just walk the ball up the floor and play in that zone defense and sit back and drain the shot clock down below 10 every time, there's just not gonna be enough possessions more than likely to come back. And the Islanders are starting to get hot from the field as they have scored a total of, let's do some quick math, 25 points with still 7.17 left. That's good stuff right there, <laughs> that's, that's quick. I mean, I'm not the greatest mathematician, but I try, you know? I, at the end of the day, it's all that matters. And at this point, like, you gotta have to have quick math when it comes to <laughs> stuff like this. 
as Redding trying to put the moves on. But some good defense from Tubbs. Here's Marquardt. Marquardt the drive, just fearless going to the rack. Gets her own miss. And she's gonna get the chance for two free throws. Avery Marquard, no fear at all. And she went in and she missed the first attempt, got it back, went right back up. I really like that approach of the Spuds have had to work so hard just to get the ball into scoring areas. When you get the chance, you can't try and kick it out and restart. She went right back up, misses the first free throw, but got herself a chance to get to the line. And a made free throw here is really big, and the reason for that, they're going to be able to set up that press. You'll see a substitution from, Dr from Tom Dryberg putting in Charlie Zimmerman because if she makes the free throw, which she does, now the game stops. You have a chance to set up the press. You'll see so many coaches do that. They don't send the sub in on between the first and second free throw because then they're just able to get the ball out of bounds and go. So she, he waits until after the second one, send a player to the table, and they're able to set up that press. And you called it once again, Riley, as the Spuds look a little more refreshed on defense, but when you're dealing with a hot offense like the Islanders, it's gonna be a 50-50 chance. Here's Marquard driving downhill, and she loses the handle. Well, and I said Coach Dryberg would live with the shot a couple minutes ago as a mid-range jumper. That may be true. He's not gonna live with easy layups. That's not what you wanna give up, of course. And so the Spuds gotta do a little better job of getting some traps on this press and forcing some turnovers. Here's a three in the corner, Tubbs, short. That's the one they're looking for. That's the one they want the Islanders to take. It might be a decent shot, but they're just trying to create more possessions. That's exactly why. Here's a pass intended for McAdams. Pass up ahead. Redding gets it back. Guarded well by Johnson. Pass to Marquard. Six minutes left on the Northwest Blind scoreboard. Shot clock at 10. Zimmerman driving to the cup. She can't finish. Had an open lane, but couldn't get it to fall. Moses puts on the brakes. Excuse me, that was Tubbs. Here is Scott in the corner for Blaylark. Pass inside to Maester. She finishes. 57-43. The first half, the offense was a little stagnant for the Islanders. Not a whole lot of movement. Now you can see they're cutting through the zone. Tom Driver gonna call a timeout. They're cutting through the zone, they're getting players open. That's why this lead has extended. On top of that, they're getting stops on the defensive end. It's just been a combination of things for them this second half. They've come out and played a really nice half and look like they might be on their way to a championship. But for the Spuds in this timeout, it's not over yet. 14 is a doable amount to come back from. You just gotta, it starts with one bucket and then stops on the other end, whether that be through a press or in the half court offense, if they're able to get to that, really clamping down and finding a way to block out, get some rebounds. And with how tenacious this Spuds team is, anything is possible, Riley. We'll take a quick break here on Spuds TV for this timeout. It is 57-43, the Islanders lead. Fifty-seven, forty-three Islanders as they look to close out the Spuds here tonight as they are fire, firing on all cylinders here in this second half. But it's not over yet when you're dealing with these Spuds as Swanson looking to drive inside. Oh, what a nice fake from Swanson and she doesn't get it to fall. Blame that one on the new rims. <laughs> Give this gym a month, that'll go in. It's all about the process, Riley. Here's a feed to Scott. And like you said, it's the rims. And that won't go but a foul. I think the biggest story on this side of the floor 
in the second half has been the offensive rebounding and really take it back to the first half has been the offensive rebounding. I don't have the stats because we're not that quite that advanced here at Spuds <laughs> TV, but I would love to know their shooting percentage on the first shot of a possession because I have to imagine it's somewhere thrown out of ballpark, 20, 30-ish, but the second, third shot of the possession after that first shot, they're probably shooting about 60% just because it's been easy looks off of offensive rebounds. And I think if Tom Dryberg wants to play this zone moving forward, which has been very effective in these two games in the tournament, you're gonna have to find a way though, okay, how do we rebound then out of the zone? I think you're probably gonna see some rebounding drills coming up in the in this week for, for Moorhead uh, moving forward just because that's been the issue right now, and that's something that can be fixed, though. It's very easily fixed, so we'll see how they bounce back. Oh, absolutely, and McAdams tried getting the feed from Horan over the top, and it goes out of bounds. But going back to what you said about us not being as advanced yet, the Jumbotron does have the stats, so it helps a little bit. It helps. I, I, I should say we're advanced in the fact we, we do have stats, I think the stats I'm asking for probably don't even exist. <laughs> I don't know how many people take the stats of first shot of the possession, really. And some contact and a foul on Redding. And that was Dylan Tubbs going up strong. This game got away from Moorhead a little bit here. Four minutes left, 15 point lead. I hate to say it's over, more than likely it feels like De La Salle is going to get a championship win here. But I think this is a really good building block for Time Dryberg and his team. This, they needed a game like this. You play against a team in DGF last night, a smaller school, you probably should win. They took care of business, they did a really nice job. Now today, they showed flashes of being really good. I think that's what they're building towards. It's where they want to be in March when section play rolls around. But right now, you can kind of see they play really well for stretches, and then they have some stretches where they haven't been quite as sharp. And now, if you're Tom Dryberg, you take those good ones, you say, all right, let's keep doing that. And then you take the bad stretches, and you go into the practice and fix it. And I think for a basketball team, that's a really fun time of year because you can, you can taste it. You can feel the, the joy of winning and what they got last night. They can see what it takes to win. And now today you see what happens when you lose and you see what it takes to beat a really good team in a championship atmosphere. So I think right now for the girls basketball team, there's a lot more good than bad. And you gotta sometimes just tip your cap, De La Salle played an excellent second half here tonight. They sure did as Tubbs on the steal and a foul will be called. Just some more excellent defense from the Islanders and it's really, their whole defense has basically come alive, mainly in this second half alone. It has, it really has, and give all the credit to them. They've done a really nice job of sticking with that defense. It is hard to play defense like they have for 36 minutes in a game. I mean, it just is. I, I've done it, tried to do it, can't do it, <laughs> because having, having that type of defensive intensity, I'll tell you, I would love to go to one of their practices, because I guarantee you they play with that intensity the whole two hour long practice, however long they practice for that day, just because you can see it is reflected. Now, for the Spuds, now they're gonna learn how to play against some of that tough defense, they're gonna have to, because you look at the section, you got teams like St. Michael Albertville, Elk River, they're gonna play this type of game of basketball, and you gotta figure out a way of how do you get tougher by the time March rolls around. Here's a three in the corner, it's no good. Tubbs going up for the rebound, and it'll go the other way. And despite this loss, Riley, the Spuds girls team looks so much better than last year. They look more energized. They look more rejuvenated, more like good in terms of chemistry. And it's only going to get better with, with how Tom Dryberg draws up his plays and his lineups. And you got to admit, like some exciting things are to come for this girls team. They do. And you can tell they play with a passion and they play with each other and play as a team. And there's a lot of things in coaching that you can fix and you can work on. You can work on rebounding and practice. You can work on being tough with the ball. You can't really teach chemistry. You can't teach playing hard. And that for Tom Dryberg, he's fortunate that he has a team, like you said. They have good chemistry. You can tell they like playing with each other. They, there's no problem of sharing the ball. That's not an issue. Playing hard is not the issue right now. It just comes down to some of the more technical things. How do we get better at rebounding? How do we get better at 
playing tough with the basketball. Those are things you can teach in practice. I'd expect him to do that. And I think this team is really starting to figure it out and playing with each other, playing hard. Now you just got to kind of clean up some of those things. But like I said, it's a fun time when that's – I've been a part of games where you lose by – right now it's 19, and you go in the locker room and you think, you know what, probably going to get our butts chewed a little bit because we didn't give our all, <laughs> our all tonight. That's not the case tonight. No pizza after this game. No, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder if you're going get, to get to go out to eat if it's on the road. I can assure you it's not going to be Tom Dryberg yelling in the locker room because – that's not the kind of game this was. I mean, you just got to give credit to De La Salle and understand that we got to get better at some stuff, and that's just the way it goes. So the Islanders, with this win, if the Spuds don't make a 19-point run in the next two minutes on the Northwest Blind scoreboard, De La Salle will extend their win streak to six games, move to 7-2, and two, and win the holiday tournament. Here tonight, the Spuds would drop to 4-5, and five, and... It was, it's still, it was still a good game regardless of the score. Absolutely. As it was a tenacious effort from both sides. And you just got to give all the credit to De La Salle and head coach James Fassett with the job he's done with this team and how they're able to play in the second half as Hagen goes up strong and she's fouled. And the thing about high school basketball compared to other levels, in the NBA, if you don't play well, in the WNBA, you don't play well, you don't make the playoffs. If you play in college and you don't get wins throughout the season, you're not going to be in the NCAA tournament at the end. In high school, everyone gets a shot to play in the playoffs, just the way it is. And so it's more process-driven than results-driven. So right now you're losing by 19. You're going to lose the game here to De La Salle. It stinks. Everyone you want to win. I take a look back at the team I was a part of my senior season. I think we started 0-5. I try to forget those first five <laughs> games. But I believe we started 0-5. And you kind of looked at the record and, Wonder where do we go from here? We ended up playing for a section championship that season. So it just comes down to how do you ignore the results in a sense? Every, of course you want to win, but how do you trust the process more and go back and get better? And then you, I almost look at it as the practice. That's kind of your homework. The games are the test. Absolutely. That makes so much sense in so many ways, Riley, as the Spuds are still down 19. And records, they're just a number. They are. They're just a number at the end of the day. And I think from I think from here, like fast forwarding to the section finals, we could see the spuds there because there are so many, there are so many strengths with this team, and they have the capability to turn these flaws that they do have into potential stepping stones that they could use to win games in the crucial moments of the season. Well, and you just never know what's going to happen. And so that's why you, you look at it as a process-driven sort of thing and not a results-driven sort of thing because as you get down to playoff time, you just want to play your best basketball. This tonight was not their best brand of basketball. I don't think Tom Dreiber would tell you even last night was their best brand of basketball despite the large win. And the goal is you don't play your best brand of basketball until the section tournament and you just get a little bit better and a little bit better each day. And although the result is different tonight, I think Thomas, you and I can probably agree, I think they look a little bit better tonight than they did last night. Because you, you gotta look at the opponent, look at how the game is played. I think tonight they showed signs of being a little bit better than they were before. That's really all you can ask for. Oh, I absolutely agree, Riley, as the free throw is no good. 65-43 on the Northwest Blind scoreboard. Thomas, got a little little trivia here for you. Okay, as okay. As we wind down here in this game. All right. De La Salle, the Islanders. Have you ever been to De La Salle High School? Never in my life. All right, it's down in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Do you yeah. know why they're called the Islanders? Uh, to be honest, Riley, that is a tough question. I am not sure. Should I just go on a whim and just guess? You, you, you can guess. That's fine. Uh, is it because it's near a certain lake in the cities? Well... Their school is actually on an island. No way. It is. I, I've, <laughs> I've been there. You cross, a, you cross, I don't know if it is, I would have to imagine it's a full island. I was only on one part of it. And it's just separated by a couple of rivers, streams, whatever you want to call them. But I've been to De La Salle High School, and I remember thinking, why are they the Islanders? It's kind of an interesting name. And you go to the school, and it's surrounded by a river. So there's a, there's a fun fact for you. That is that. <laughs> You learn something new every day, Riley. I honestly had it's no not, It's not fact, though, so don't quote me on that, <laughs> but I'm 
95% certain that is why they're called the Islanders. It would make sense to me, and the drive to the basket from Aubrey Haig is no good, but a foul. And a few of the bench players getting some minutes in these final seconds. You can see some of the De La Salle players going in, like I said, down in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, so they got a little bit of a drive after this one, and I'd love to say that I, uh, I feel bad for them, but being a Moorhead spud and having all of our section opponents down in that area, I've been on a, uh, a number of those drives late at night, so no necessarily feel bad, but I feel their pain is more so, I guess, what I could say, because but I can tell you this, those bus rides home, heck of a lot more fun after a win than a loss. So good for them tonight winning the championship. And I have a feeling it's going to be a, a fun bus ride home. At least I'm assuming they're going home here this evening. Oh, absolutely. And you, you are abs you're absolutely right. And going home after a loss is brutal because the atmosphere on the bus is just completely <laughs> it's, different. It's not fun usually. When at, least, you, at least not the first hour. Right. As, as I announced with Brady Sari, a former Spuds TV announcer, Last year we went to Sartell for the section finals for boys basketball. They ended up losing to Buffalo, and the ride back was just, it was super quiet, no, no energy whatsoever. And for volleyball this year, it was, I would say, worse because it was, it was dead quiet. <laughs> I was able to nap good, though, so that's <laughs> that a positive. Is, that is a positive. You always got to find those. But yep. good, good for De La Salle getting the win here tonight. Uh, good for Moorhead, though. They, 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 they played with... Everything they had just wasn't enough in the end, but good for the Islanders getting a championship and for Tom Dreiberg and his team. I think a lot of pieces to build off of. Overall, just a fun basketball game to watch. I mean, it really wasn't a blowout in terms until maybe the last five, six minutes. So a lot of fun here tonight, Thomas, but same as last night. We're only halfway home. Still got a boys' championship coming up. It's going to be a great night here. Continued to be a great night uh, here in the new gymnasium. Absolutely. This is game one of our doubleheader, as Riley mentioned. Game two is coming up next here on Spuds TV. The boys will be taking on the Roseville Raiders after this quick break. The De La Salle Islanders beat the Moorhead Spuds 65-44. They win the holiday tournament. And it was a good game all around. We'll be back here on Spuds TV for the boys tournament finals. It will be the Spuds and the Raiders coming up. We are The Breakdown. For almost two decades, we've published the most comprehensive yearbooks on Minnesota high school sports and run the best in-season and off-season events. We cover every corner of the state. We are The Breakdown. Boss DXT snowplows are tough to beat. Featuring dual trip tech, flared wings, and optional D-force for improved scraping and backdragging performance. Choose from three different sizes in steel, stainless steel, and poly. The Boss DXT is built to restore order. Your home for Boss snowplows is Burt's Truck Equipment on Highway 75 North and Moorhead.
Hi, I'm Katie with First Community Credit Union, and we're here in Fargo, North Dakota at Bailey's PDR. So what made you choose FCCU for your business needs? I love the customer support that they give, that I have people's phone numbers that I can reach whenever I need to. Uh, when you're conducting business, you don't have hours to hopefully make up a, a financial decision, so sometimes you need those questions answered, and at FCCU, they're there always for you. To show up to work every day, it's not a job. It's not just a paycheck. It ultimately is a way of life. And to add that extra smile in someone's day is what gets me to work every day. And in return, to just receive those smiles and those thank yous or those squeezes of your hand is so meaningful. And it really brings me back every day. Atchison Companies is a private investment firm focused on helping small businesses succeed. We are more than investors. We are proven hands-on operators. Atchison Companies works with independent businesses in the manufacturing, distribution and engineering sectors. We invest across the Northern Plains with a buy and hold philosophy while providing stable leadership and a proven operating system. Atchison Companies is proud to support the Moorhead Spuds Before I became a real boy, life was easy. I just sat there doing sandwich stuff. But being alive is so hard. So if you don't want to get up to get a sandwich, you shouldn't have to. Pam is a small business owner. She is swamped. Pam knows she needs to advertise, but is overwhelmed by all the options. What if there was a way for Pam to have access to a team of media experts? What if this was at no extra cost and didn't require a contract? Meet Avenue Right. Save time, money, and get peace of mind that your advertising dollars are well spent. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair has provided the FM area with vehicle service and repairs since 1978. They perform your vehicle service needs from oil changes and brakes to transmission and engine rebuilds. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair is a proud sponsor of Spuds Athletics and wish all the athletes and families a great 2022-23 school year and sports season. Don't work out where you won't work out. Blueprint Personal Training. At Blueprint, you'll work directly with an experienced personal trainer and nutrition coach in our brand new private gym. Tell us about your fitness goals, and we'll provide the personalized workouts and motivation to get the results you want to see. Training, nutrition, accountability. Blueprint Personal Training. BlueprintFargo.com. At 
Moorhead Dental Associates, you'll get the very best care and state-of-the-art technology. Dr. Scatfold and Dr. Johnson are now accepting new patients. Call or stop in to Moorhead Dental Associates. We are The Breakdown. For almost two decades, we've published the most comprehensive yearbooks on Minnesota high school sports and run the best in-season and off-season events. We cover every corner of the state. We are The Breakdown. Boss DXT snowplows are tough to beat. Featuring dual trip tech, flared wings, and optional D-force for improved scraping and backdragging performance. Choose from three different sizes in steel, stainless steel, and poly. The Boss DXT is built to restore order. Your home for Boss snowplows is Burt's Truck Equipment on Highway 75 North and Moorhead. Hi, I'm Katie with First Community Credit Union, and we're here in Fargo, North Dakota at Bailey's PDR. So what made you choose FCCU for your business needs? I love the customer support that they give, that I have people's phone numbers that I can reach whenever I need to. Uh, when you're conducting business, you don't have hours to hopefully make up a, a financial decision, so sometimes you need those questions answered, and at FCCU, they're there always for you. To show up to work every day, it's not a job. It's not just a paycheck. It ultimately is a way of life. And to add that extra smile in someone's day is what gets me to work every day. And in return, to just receive those smiles and those thank yous or those squeezes of your hand is so meaningful. And it really brings me back every day.
Atchison Companies is a private investment firm focused on helping small businesses succeed. We are more than investors. We are proven hands-on operators. Atchison Companies works with independent businesses in the manufacturing, distribution and engineering sectors. We invest across the Northern Plains with a buy and hold philosophy while providing stable leadership and a proven operating system. Atchison Companies is proud to support the Moorhead Spuds. Before I became a real boy, life was easy. I just sat there doing sandwich stuff. But being alive is so hard. So if you don't want to get up to get a sandwich, you shouldn't have to. Pam is a small business owner. She is swamped. Pam knows she needs to advertise, but is overwhelmed by all the options. What if there was a way for Pam to have access to a team of media experts? What if this was at no extra cost and didn't require a contract? Meet Avenue Right. Save time, money, and get peace of mind that your advertising dollars are well spent. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair has provided the FM area with vehicle service and repairs since 1978. They perform your vehicle service needs from oil changes and brakes to transmission and engine rebuilds. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair is a proud sponsor of Spuds Athletics and wish all the athletes and families a great 2022-23 school year and sports season. Don't work out where you won't work out. Blueprint Personal Training. At Blueprint, you'll work directly with an experienced personal trainer and nutrition coach in our brand new private gym. Tell us about your fitness goals, and we'll provide the personalized workouts and motivation to get the results you want to see. Training, nutrition, accountability. Blueprint Personal Training. BlueprintFargo.com. Moorhead Dental Associates, you'll get the very best care and state-of-the-art technology. Dr. Scatfold and Dr. Johnson are now accepting new patients. Call or stop in to Moorhead Dental Associates. We are The Breakdown. For almost two decades, we've published the most comprehensive yearbooks on Minnesota high school sports and run the best in-season and off-season events. We cover every corner of the state. We are The Breakdown.
Boss DXT snowplows are tough to beat. Featuring dual trip tech, flared wings, and optional D-force for improved scraping and backdragging performance. Choose from three different sizes in steel, stainless steel, and poly. The Boss DXT is built to restore order. Your home for Boss snowplows is Burt's Truck Equipment on Highway 75 North and Moorhead. Hi, I'm Katie with First Community Credit Union, and we're here in Fargo, North Dakota at Bailey's PDR. So what made you choose FCCU for your business needs? I love the customer support that they give, that I have people's phone numbers that I can reach whenever I need to. Uh, when you're conducting business, you don't have hours to hopefully make up a, a financial decision, so sometimes you need those questions answered, and at FCCU, they're there always for you. To show up to work every day, it's not a job. It's not just a paycheck. It ultimately is a way of life. And to add that extra smile in someone's day is what gets me to work every day. And in return, to just receive those smiles and those thank yous or those squeezes of your hand is so meaningful. And it really brings me back every day. Atchison Companies is a private investment firm focused on helping small businesses succeed. We are more than investors. We are proven hands-on operators. Atchison Companies works with independent businesses in the manufacturing, distribution and engineering sectors. We invest across the Northern Plains with a buy and hold philosophy while providing stable leadership and a proven operating system. Atchison Companies is proud to support the Moorhead Spuds Before I became a real boy, life was easy. I just sat there doing sandwich stuff. But being alive is so hard. So if you don't want to get up to get a sandwich, you shouldn't have to. Pam is a small business owner. She is swamped. Pam knows she needs to advertise, but is overwhelmed by all the options. What if there was a way for Pam to have access to a team of media experts? What if this was at no extra cost and didn't require a contract? Meet Avenue Right. Save time, money, and get peace of mind that your advertising dollars are well spent. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair has provided the FM area with vehicle service and repairs since 1978. They perform your vehicle service needs from oil changes and brakes to transmission and engine rebuilds. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair is a proud sponsor of Spuds Athletics 
and wish all the athletes and families a great 2022-23 school year and sports season. Don't work out where you won't work out. Blueprint Personal Training. At Blueprint, you'll work directly with an experienced personal trainer and nutrition coach in our brand new private gym. Tell us about your fitness goals, and we'll provide the personalized workouts and motivation to get the results you want to see. Training, nutrition, accountability. Blueprint Personal Training. BlueprintFargo.com. Moorhead Dental Associates, you'll get the very best care and state-of-the-art technology. Dr. Scatbold and Dr. Johnson are now accepting new patients. Call or stop in to Moorhead Dental Associates. We are The Breakdown. For almost two decades, we've published the most comprehensive yearbooks on Minnesota high school sports and run the best in-season and off-season events. We cover every corner of the state. We are The Breakdown. Boss DXT snowplows are tough to beat. Featuring dual trip tech, flared wings, and optional D-force for improved scraping and backdragging performance. Choose from three different sizes in steel, stainless steel, and poly. The Boss DXT is built to restore order. Your home for Boss snowplows is Burt's Truck Equipment on Highway 75 North and Moorhead. Hi, I'm Katie with First Community Credit Union, and we're here in Fargo, North Dakota at Bailey's PDR. So what made you choose FCCU for your business needs? I love the customer support that they give, that I have people's phone numbers that I can reach whenever I need to. Uh, when you're conducting business, you don't have hours to hopefully make up a, a financial decision, so sometimes you need those questions answered, and at FCCU, they're there always for you. To show up to work every day, it's not a job. It's not just a paycheck. It ultimately is a way of life. And to add that extra smile in someone's day is what gets me to work every day. And in return, to just receive those smiles and those thank yous or those squeezes of your hand is so meaningful. And it really brings me back every day.
Atchison Companies is a private investment firm focused on helping small businesses succeed. We are more than investors. We are proven hands-on operators. Atchison Companies works with independent businesses in the manufacturing, distribution and engineering sectors. We invest across the Northern Plains with a buy and hold philosophy while providing stable leadership and a proven operating system. Atchison Companies is proud to support the Moorhead Spuds Before I became a real boy, life was easy. I just sat there doing sandwich stuff. But being alive is so hard. So if you don't want to get up to get a sandwich, you shouldn't have to. Pam is a small business owner. She is swamped. Pam knows she needs to advertise, but is overwhelmed by all the options. What if there was a way for Pam to have access to a team of media experts? What if this was at no extra cost and didn't require a contract? Meet Avenue Right. Save time, money, and get peace of mind that your advertising dollars are well spent. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair has provided the FM area with vehicle service and repairs since 1978. They perform your vehicle service needs from oil changes and brakes to transmission and engine rebuilds. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair is a proud sponsor of Spuds Athletics and wish all the athletes and families a great 2022-23 school year and sports season. Don't work out where you won't work out. Blueprint Personal Training. At Blueprint, you'll work directly with an experienced personal trainer and nutrition coach in our brand new private gym. Tell us about your fitness goals, and we'll provide the personalized workouts and motivation to get the results you want to see. Training, nutrition, accountability. Blueprint Personal Training. BlueprintFargo.com. Moorhead Dental Associates, you'll get the very best care and state-of-the-art technology. Dr. Scatfold and Dr. Johnson are now accepting new patients. Call or stop in to Moorhead Dental Associates. We are The Breakdown. For almost two decades, we've published the most comprehensive yearbooks on Minnesota high school sports and run the best in-season and off-season events. We cover every corner of the state. We are The Breakdown.
Game two of our doubleheader is just around the corner. The boys are scheduled to duel it out for the tournament championship as the Moorhead Spuds welcome the Roseville Raiders and welcome everybody to the boys tournament final. I'm Thomas Fox alongside Riley Swenson. Riley, coming off last night, the Spuds dominated DGF, but now tonight's a tougher test. The real test for the Spuds, the Roseville Raiders who beat a very talented Detroit Lakes team last night. Yes, the Spuds are coming off a win and DGF maybe a little undersized yesterday, pretty much outgunned, obviously a much bigger school. More had the same situation as the girls. And so today, if they make the same mistakes that they did yesterday, I think Roseville's probably gonna take a little bit more advantage than DGF did last night. Some careless turnovers from Moorhead last night, some things that they can definitely clean up upon. But that's why you play these back-to-back -back games, why you play the holiday tournaments, a lot of fun. You don't have the chance to sit and dwell on them or really even practice to work out those kinks. I'm sure Matt Ellingson told his team, we gotta clean it up, and they came back today. And then we'll see if they were able to do so here for the next 36 minutes. And on top of that, like you said, Roseville, a tough game yesterday against Detroit Lakes. I wonder if that will play a factor because their game was competitive from start to finish. Moorhead, of course, able to cruise to a victory, get some guys at the end of the game, get off their legs. Some of their guys that play a lot of minutes. So you wonder if this thing becomes a war of attrition towards the end and just which team is able to last longer in that aspect. But I'm looking forward to it. Should be a heck of a lot of fun. Two good teams, again, playing for a championship. It's what you hope for. And uh, hopefully the new gym didn't open exactly how the Spuds would want, but hopefully night one can close the way and they can get a win inside the new gymnasium. Absolutely, Riley. Two good teams about to bump heads here tonight. It's the Spuds and the Raiders coming up on Spuds TV. We are just about set for game time here at the New Moorhead Gym Gymnasium as the Spuds welcome in the Roseville Raiders who are on a two game win streak. Their most recent win coming yesterday against the Detroit Lakes Lakers, beating them 75-65 And Riley. As mentioned before in the pregame, Detroit Lakes is a very, very good team. They were 5-0 before their loss yesterday and mainly it's because of Roseville's defense as it was led by Atom Mensa who was just all over the court. They're a long, lanky bunch, and they're going to get after it on the defensive end. We saw that from De La Salle in the first game of our doubleheader here on the girls. I'd expect the same thing for the Spuds opponent here in the boys game. They're going to want to get up, pressure the basketball, and again, it's going to be a test of the Spuds' toughness 
of how well they can handle that. You gotta be tough with the ball, swing through, put the ball on your chin and play with a purpose and an assertiveness. That's what they're going to need to do tonight. And for Moorhead, I think you gotta build off what you did last night, take the good and eliminate some of the bad. Like I said, the sloppy turnovers, I think they're gonna try and eliminate some of those. It essentially just comes down to being careless with the balls, what they were last night, simply put. And so they're easy, easy errors to fix. We'll just see if they have the focus tonight to be able to fix those. But I think they've got to be excited to play in this new gym. They closed out last night, old gym, with a victory. See if they can get the first win for the Spuds here in the new one. Absolutely, Riley. And let's go through the starting lines for both teams. Moorhead's lineup will stay the same as last night, as it'll be Zarazua, Smith, Battle, Fieldges, and Zimmerman on the floor for Matt Ellingson, Spuds, and for the Roseville Raiders and Jemaine, Jemaine's Cooks team. It'll be Jemen Cook Jr., Kellen Little, Atta Mensa, Nate Hatterberg, and William DeVries on the floor. And we'll have a good one in store here in a few moments. Thomas, I just wanted to mention, if you're listening to the girls game, we had a, a viewer, they sent us, they, they confirmed yep. De La Salle <laughs> is on an island, I was correct, so. Points I'd, for you, Riley. I had thought I was 95% certain they were, and that's, I maybe should have done my research a little better, but I was pretty sure they were, so thank you to the, to the fans out there helping us out and, uh, and getting that one right for us. It was a shot in the dark, Riley, but you got it right. You're on, you're on the board. I, am, the, I am indeed. You're just a wizard, man. That's just how it is with you, isn't it? Well, I, I try. I'd, I'd like to think I'm right more than I'm wrong, but I think I, maybe sometimes I'm wrong more than I'm right. But <laughs> Zimmerman will tip it for the Spuds and for the Raiders. Looks like it'll be Kellen Little. And off we go with a tournament final. It'll be a Tom Mensa leading it for the Raiders. Over to Hatterberg on the wing, guarded by Smith. Here's Cook in the corner for Mensa. Mensa drives. Here's DeVries. Here's Little. Over to Cook, guarded by Zarazua, the nifty facilitator. Speaking of nifty facilitators, it's Jaman Cook getting things started for the Raiders. And really nice drive straight to the cup. No really rim protection from the Spuds. Now you see a little pressure Similar to what the Moorhead girls team does, the three-quarter court press from Roseville. That time the Spuds able to break it, but keep an eye on that throughout the evening. And the Raiders in the second half of their win last night, they played very aggressive defense. As you mentioned before, oh, going up, Tommy caught a body. Zimmerman with some dynamite to get things started for Moorhead. I've seen that got the crowd going. <laughs> I've seen a lot of really impressive plays in high school basketball. I thought it was just a back cut. And I realized he threw it up a little bit more like a lob. I didn't think Dylan Zimmerman had a chance to get up there and finish. That was really, really impressive. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Malik Harden Hayes back at, back who I got to play with back in the day. <laughs> we, uh, we drew up that play a few times for him, I remember. But really nice play from Zimmerman. Oh, what a play that was. And Battle driving inside. And it'll stay with Moorhead as Steele just went up for the board. And D uh, Dylan Zimmerman coming off a special night last night, getting to 1,000 points and having a lot of highlight reel plays, including a two-handed slam towards the end. Loose ball and a spin from Hatterberg to get out of traffic. Here's DeVries on the finish. Zara Zua almost got there, and he looks to take it up a notch in terms of the pace. Zara Zua trying to get free, finds Steele is in the backcourt, and it'll go out of bounds. Good defense from Roseville underneath. Zara Zua finds Zimmerman. Good looking three. Strong effort by Thielges. Smith going up, and he's gonna go to the line for two. Nice job by DJ Smith getting down there and making something happen. A really good baseline out of bounds to get Dylan Zimmerman that look. Uh, you don't see him miss too many of those where he's that open, but the Spud's never giving up on the play, and DJ Smith using his size to get down low and earn himself a trip to the free throw line. DJ Smith, a very solid free throw shooter, just a shot solid shooter in general. 
and the new rim causes him to miss. And like we mentioned in the girls' game, it's going to take a while for the rims to, you know, get it, get into the rhythm as there was a lot of shots that should have been made. It's opening night for them too, just like it is for the players. Absolutely. In the, in the new gym, it's opening night for them too. Seven to three, Raiders lead. Here's Mensa on the wing. Short, strong rebound by Little, and the putback is no good. Smith with the board. Oh, what a nice cut from Battle underneath. And an even better pass from Smith to make it 7-5. And like you said, an even better pass and recognizing that did Smith. It's always a rule if someone drives at you, you cut. And that time Rain Battle knew that Smith was coming at him in the corner and had nowhere else to go. Cuts baseline, a really nice finish as well. Here's Mensa driving on Zimmerman. Backward pass to DeVries. He loses the ball. It'll stay with the Raiders. As it was last touched by Thielges trying to make a defensive play. Bounce pass wide open and off the mark was Hatterberg. Here's Battle in transition over to Smith. Smith driving inside. Could not finish. Rebound Hatterberg. Here comes Mensa. Oh, what a nice move by a Tom Mensa. And he almost got the end one, but he'll still get two free throws. And not only is a, he is a great defender, but He's just an all-around great offensive player as well, as you saw those handles. He has in that frame of his, like I mentioned, the whole team of Roseville, they're long. They're able to get in the passing lanes. Well, on offense, he uses it to his advantage. He's got a really nice handle on the ball, like you mentioned. He's able just to get downhill, get to the rim, and really good finisher around the rim as well. That time didn't finish, of course, because he was fouled. But he's a guy that does a lot for this Roseville team. He kind of runs the show at the point guard spot, gets them into a lot of their offensive action. And a, and a good job there, and of course, if you're gonna be a point guard, you gotta knock down some free throws. Absolutely, Riley. And here comes Zara Zua. Bounce pass to Thielges. Zips it ahead for Smith. Another good pass to Zara Zua. Zara Zua communicating with Smith. Over to Zimmerman. Here's Zara Zua, top of the key. Oh, what a nice move. Inside Smith for the Tomahawk slam. Textbook ball movement from the Spuds, and it's a two-point game. Oh, driving inside is Cook off the window. No good. Here comes Zarazu with the spin. He loses the handle. Everybody's falling. Here comes Little in transition, and he scores. A lot happening in the early going, and it's 11-7. Here's Battle. Underneath, Zarazu with the reverse, and he's fouled. And this is pretty much the pace that both of these teams want to play at. Sometimes it's going to be a little chaotic, but both teams want to get out in transition. Maybe not quite a hectic pace, but they want to play at a fast pace. So I expect this game to be up and down throughout. Just the difference in the game is going to be which team can control that pace. And while they're playing fast, still be under control. You saw that time Zara Zua, he just got out a little bit too far ahead of himself. It's the right idea to get up the floor as the point guard but I, like, I always remember coaches telling me back in the day, you can pass it forward a heck of a lot faster, you can dribble it forward. I think Zarazu, if you had to go back and do it again, you'd probably get a pass ahead. But you can see a quick bounce back, able to get fouled and head to the line. D'Angelo Jones out there for the Spuds. Zimmerman missed the block, and the layup is good. Atom Mensa getting the bucket. Here's Zarazua cutting through the lane, and he finishes. Thomas, did I mention there was going to be a fast pace as Matt Ellingson calls a timeout? I think just for a quick breather, you saw Mensah score on one end, and it had to be less than 10 seconds later. Zara Zoo was already at the other end, laying one in himself. And the timeout from Matt Ellingson right now is just saying kind of that reminder of, hey, we want to play at the fast pace. We have to play under control. And if you want to play at a fast pace in the offensive end, you got to be able to get back and play defense, especially against a team like Roseville who wants to get out and run themselves. I agree, Riley, and Matt Ellingson, terrific coach, took his team to the section finals last year, and he knows how to draw up the right plays and get his team their, their toes in the water, and it was kind of a slow start against DGF, but they were able to get out of there with a 30-point win. They were, they were. They started off 
They started off slow, but they were able to finish fast. You mentioned Coach Matt Ellingson. Want to give a shout out to his dad, Scott Ellingson. We know he's watching tonight on Spuds TV. Hope that he feels better soon. Hopefully the Spuds can get a win for him tonight in the championship. Absolutely. Rebound to Vries, kick out to Mensa. Mensa driving, catches a double team. Rattles in and out, Smith the board on the baseline, but his foot was out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Raiders. That was a good effort from Smith getting that board. And the shot clock will be at 20. Cook bounce pass, stripped away by Battle, picked up by Zarazua. Here comes Jones in transition, weaving his way, no foul is called, they're letting them play. Here is Jemaine Cook. Here's DeVries. Picks up a screen, over to Hatterberg on the wing. Oh, what a nice spin from Hatterberg, and he finishes. Nate Hatterberg making it look easy, and it's 15 to 10 on the first half promo scoreboard. And a block from Jamen Cook. Defense firing on all cylinders for Roseville. Here's Cook putting the moves on Smith. Now Mensa for three, bottom. 18 to 10 Roseville as Mensa hits the top of the key three. And it's intercepted by Mensa. There's the defense we were talking about in the pregame. Stops, passes inside to Hatterberg. Gets it out, Cook for three. It's good, Jamin Cook from downtown. And Roseville's running away with this one here in the first half. It's just some elite level shot making on back-to-back -back possessions. They're tough shots and then really hard to defend if you're more at times you just gotta tip the cap and that's one of those situations in that, in that instance. Here is Smith, catches a feed from Zimmerman and a strong finish, doesn't go. Rebound to Vries, here come the Raiders. Kick out in the corner, little three and a foul is called and going to the free throw line is Kellen Little. Coach Ellingson that time is asking for the charge to be called, and a lot of times you are, the charges are really easy to notice, and the guy's going to the hoop and he goes and shoots. There's just about as many charges when a guy comes in and he still throws the pass, but if he can't slow himself down before knocking the defender over, I mean, it's still a charge, and I think that's what Coach Ellingson was looking for in that chance, but really what the Spuds need to do a better job is getting back in transition. They want to play fast, and I understand that. But every time that there's been a missed shot, the Raiders have been able to get out, get some easy looks in transition. They're just beating the, the Spuds down the floor right now. I think that's got to be a point of emphasis moving forward is, hey, we want to play fast, and that's how we want to play, but so does Roseville, and we got to remember that. Owen Thielges and Karsten Hoff check into the game for the Spuds as that free throw is good from Kellen Little. He hits both as it's a 13 point lead for the Raiders. Here's Thielges, guarded by Cook. Zarazua pass inside to Jones. Jones posting up, and he finishes off the glass. Strong, strong play there from D'Angelo Jones. Like you said, a strong take to the rim. A really nice job from Jones going straight into the chest of the defender. Here is Little, now it is Atom Mensa. Kick out on the wing. Here is Little, step back three, short. Field just recovers. Zarazua zips it to Zimmerman. Here's Hoff. Oh, what a nice feed. Oh, he almost tomahawked it down. Couldn't get the dunk to go. And a charge. Zarazua doing it again. Taking one for the team. It'll go the other way. And on that last offensive possession, that was a great feed to Dylan Zimmerman. Unfortunately, he missed the jam. Yeah, and he missed a, he missed a dunk last night as well but I think that's a shot you're gonna live with, obviously. I think he'll tell you he's gonna make most of those. He hasn't been able to put them away the last couple of nights, and Zara Zua doing a nice job getting back on defense and getting set. Talk about tough shot making from Roseville. How about that shot from Zimmerman? <laughs> he makes it look so easy. Every night, night in and night out, Dylan Zimmerman is making ridiculous shot after ridiculous shot. And a foul will be called against Zimmerman as he works on Jemaine Cook. So going back to the Zarazua charge, one thing I noticed last night when I walked into the gym I thought was interesting. You see the little restricted arc outside of where the hoop is, and of course you have to be outside that to take a charge. Yep. It's really hard to see, especially from up here and 
on the floor a little easier, but they made it just the natural wood color opposed to in the old gym it was black. And so that's, not only is it hard for players to recognize where it's at, it's hard for refs to see that as well. Just something to keep an eye on. Yeah, you are right. The restricted area isn't the easiest to see. Like, you are definitely right about that. As Noah George hits the three for Roseville. Zimmerman driving, loses the ball, kicks it to Smith. Smith, the drive and the foul. A lot of physicality going early on in the paint. And we kind of expected that from Roseville from the start. Yeah, you can expect that, absolutely. It was going to be a physical ball game. And for Moorhead, we talked at the start about the turnovers yesterday and how DGF didn't necessarily take advantage. Well, early on in this game, the turnovers and really oftentimes a bad shot can be qualified as a turnover. The Raiders have taken advantage. So they just got to clean it up a little bit. Even that possession, the ball was kind of flying around. You'd really like to see them just be a little stronger with the ball and take care of it a little more and value each possession. Smith hits the last free throw. Mensa will inbound it to Little. Back to Mensa. Mensa guarded by Smith at half court. Deflected, stolen by Zimmerman. Here we go, a potential, potential two on one, and the lob to Zimmerman is no good but a foul. It's a pretty nice luxury to have when you can just toss it up and you know your guy's gonna go up and get it. I think Smith might have been able just to finish that one himself. He's a pretty athletic guy and maybe just wanted to go up with that one instead of throwing it to his buddy Zimmerman. Timeout here taken by Roseville, but a good play and you can just see, it starts on the defensive end. And I said in the girls game, it was about offensive execution. In this game, it's gonna be about who can get stops. Both teams can score, they've shown that already. Who can get stops, that time a live ball turnover, spuds go the other way and results in an easy look. And so far, Roseville has dominated defensively if we're looking at it from a certain lens as they've created turnovers and they've gotten points off of them. And we will see what else is in store for the rest of the first half here on Spuds TV as Roseville leads 26 to 15. Twenty six fifteen Roseville leads the Spuds with ten twenty left on the first half promo scoreboard. We'll see what Matt Ellingson has drawn up on the bench as well as the Roseville coach Jamen Cook. For the Spuds it'll be Zimmerman, Battle, Hoff, Fielges, and Smith. And for the Raiders, it'll be DeVries, George, Jace Ruth. Ata Mensa, and looks like it will be trying to get a number here. Looks like it'll be Halo Low out there for the Raiders. Zimmerman at the line, pure free throw shooter. He hits that one there, leads cut to 10. Mensa will take it up for the Raiders. Kick out to George on the wing, guarded by Hoff. Switch with Battle. And a wild pass goes into the Spuds bench. And the Spuds get a gift. An offensive mistake from Roseville will give the Spuds a chance to get some momentum. We talked about the turnovers from Moore. That time it's Roseville with the turnover. But as I like to say, not all turnovers are created equal. That one you can almost, I don't want to say live with, but it's better. Nice finish by Zarazu on that end. But the live ball turnover a couple possessions ago where Zimmerman was able to start a transition break and go to the free throw line, that, those are the backbreakers because you can't get back and defend anyone. You throw it out of bounds, get a chance to set your defense. Didn't work out that time, but that's a better turnover in the sense of you don't just want to throw it to the other team, at least they threw it out of bounds. Here is Lowe, gets a screen from Ruth. In the corner, DeVries, offline. Strong rebound by Ruth, and he can't finish. But Smith can get the board. Spuds go tempo. Zarazua looking to drive baseline, guarded heavily by Mensa. Smith cutting inside, fades away. It's good. Tough shot from Smith, but he gets it to fall anyway. It's 
maybe a warning on DJ Smith. I think he uh, thought he might have got fouled on the play, but a really tough shot. And uh, to be honest, as he put it up, I thought, I don't know if that's the look they wanted. Probably isn't the look that Coach Matt Ellingson is looking for, but you can't really say anything as a coach if it goes in. Right, exactly. Points are points at the end of the day. Here's right. Mensa with a three. That's good. A Tom Mensa bowling out here in the first half and a wild pass that goes ahead of Hoff and into the bleachers. And that's something that you brought up earlier in the broadcast. There's no wall anymore, just bleachers. That's so right. That's it right. is definitely gonna be new territory for these players, both on the girls and boys team. A nine point lead for the Raiders. Inbound to low. Thielges will be on him at half court. Dishing out to Ruth. Here's George, three on the wing. Nothing but air. Zarazua is there to make the rebound. Zarazua slicing his way through the lane and he'll be fouled. Not on the shot, but there was contact before he was able to get the shot up. So he'll inbound from the baseline. Quick inbound to Smith, poked away by DeVries. It'll stay with Moorhead. You can see the active hands from the Raiders. Just about every time a spud has the basketball, they always have a hand not tracing the ball. It's kind of what you're taught as a kid growing up. You want to trace the ball with your hands. DeVries, you saw it that time. Really nice job. Here's Zimmerman, thought about a three, instead drives inside. Zarazua, Fielges, keeping it simple. Fielges with the deuce off the glass. Here is low. Here is Tyler Thompson. Now DeVries, back to low. Low. Here is George. Back to low. On the wing for George. Shot clock at 10. Trying to put the moves on Zimmerman. Nifty floater is no good. Here comes Zarazua in transition. Nice move there on Ruth. The shot is no good. Low ends up with the ball. He skips it ahead for Thompson. 29-22. With 7.22 left on the first half promo scoreboard. Here's Thompson over to DeVries, splitting the defenders, and the floater's no good. Loose ball, kick out to low. He'll take a three, short. Smith is there for the board. Smith, turn it up a notch, deep three, you bet. DZ with the three, and the lead's cut to four. It's all about getting stops for the Spuds. A nice shot from Zimmerman, but you can see their offense has been motivated by their defense. A really good rebound that time from Rain Battle, going up and fighting it free from the bigger opponent. That's just in his MO, Riley, and along with many of the other players on this team. And here is Battle now. Find Smith. Smith tried hopping his way, but he's going to be called for the double dribble. Tried driving his way through the lane, and it'll be Roseville ball. Here is Lowe. Now it is Hagman over to George. Here's Lowe guarded by D'Angelo Jones. Here is Noah George. Now DeVries, the floater, short. Jones the rebound. Up ahead to Zimmerman, loose ball, out of bounds, and it'll stay with Moorhead. That's kind of funny, both coaches asking for different things. Coach Ellingson was hoping for a foul, thought there was some contact on Zimmerman, and then right in front of the bench that time of Jameen Cook, he was asking for it to be out of bounds on his team's ball. And uh, neither of them got technically what they were asking for, but I think Coach Ellingson will take the result, his team with the ball. It's a win at the end of the day, Riley, as Zimmerman controls, fades away, no good. 
Lowell smartly let it roll out of bounds. And I'd like to see Zimmerman, you know, he's shown he can make that fadeaway shot. And it's a shot that he has it in his arsenal. But that time he's got a smaller defender on him. Go towards the hoop, go through his chest, go to the rim. Maybe get fouled. If you fade away, you have no chance of getting fouled and it's just a tough shot. So I think if that happens again, you might try and see him attack the rim more instead of that fadeaway jumper. Which like I said, he can make, but I think he can get a better look. Here's Hatterberg, guarded by Zarazua. Shot clock at 13. Hatterberg driving to the cup, plus the foul. Really nice spin move, and that's something that I remember working on in practice all the time. Basketball camp in the summer, you drive to the cone at the elbow, the help defender comes over, spin move down the lane, and he has the focus and concentration to never take his eyes off the rim, absorbs the contact from Zarazua, and still finishes with the right hand. Hatterberg, a 6'2 senior for the Raiders. He puts them back up by six. Here's Zarazua catching a screen from Smith. Open three, Zimmerman. Leads cut to three as Zimmerman nails yet another three. Just such a confident stroke from Dylan Zimmerman. He was near the half court line by the time it went in because he started running back on defense saying, fellas, it's going down, don't worry. Here's Thompson a three. That's short. Rebound battle. Here comes Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Hesitates, almost lost the ball. Zarazua thinking about passing it to Jones. Instead, now passes to Jones. Thought about driving to the cup. Now Zimmerman, guarded by Lowe. Here is Battle, guarded by George. Loose ball picked up by Smith. Dump off Zarazua for the tie. He got it. 31 all as Zarazua knocks down the tray. The Spuds really haven't played their best basketball this half, but thanks to the shot making of Zimmerman and now Zara Zua, they find themselves tied, but once again, it's the stops they've gotten and the rebounds they've been able to get on this end of the floor. Here's the drive from Hatterberg. No good, Smith the rebound. And their offense has influenced their defense to play well. Like you said before, here's Smith trying to split the defenders, falls down. Zara Zua loses the ball. It'll stay with the Spuds. And two subs for each team coming in. For the Raiders, it'll be Mensa and Cook Jr. For the Spuds, it'll be Hoff, along with Fielges. Here's Smith driving to the cup. Fielges went over the top to try to get the board. It'll stay with Moorhead. Strong effort, though, from Fielges. Zarazua looking for Thielges and it's intercepted by Lowe. Here comes Mensa driving to the cup and he's going to be fouled. He'll get two free throws. That's what I'm talking about, those live ball turnovers right in the middle of the floor. It seems like every time the Spuds have turned the ball over, the Raiders are getting down and either getting fouled or getting a bucket within two, three seconds just because it sparks their transition offense. You simply can't turn the ball over, especially in high school basketball. The lower levels of basketball, once again, don't have the stats on it, but I'd love <laughs> to look at it. If you turn the ball over more than the other team, you probably lose more often than you win. It just, it just has such an effect on the outcome of a game, and you gotta take care of the ball and value every single possession. I think a few years, I think a few years from now, they're gonna have that statistic on the Jumbotron and just in general for high school basketball in the future. So we'll look out for that <laughs> as time progresses as both free throws are made by Mensa. 33-31 on the first half promo scoreboard. Here comes Zarazua, poked away by Cook, and bodies falling. Foul is called. And it'll be against Zarazua after there was a fight for the ball. And second foul on Zarazua. Yeah, his second, looks like Coach Ellingson's gonna trust him and leave him in the game. But something to keep an eye on. If he picks up his third, it'd be a devastating loss for the Spud team. Zarazua is one of their best defenders, especially on the perimeter. Jemen, Jemen Cook got a bad bounce. Fields is the rebound. 
Kick out to Zarazua on the wing. Oh, nice spin. Zarazua to the cup and he finishes. Oh, that's why you leave him in there, Riley. Absolutely, a little English on the finish there. Got the spin of the ball. Nice take from Zarazua. Kick out in the corner, three. And a loose ball foul going to be called against Roseville. A lot of intensity early on here in this first half. Well, that's how a championship game should be. Both teams playing for a title tonight. Roseville came out. It's, it's almost like it's a, it's a 10 round boxing match. They, they won the first couple of rounds, but now the Spuds are throwing haymakers. It's as if uh, Muhammad Ali fought Mike Tyson that's once right. again. It's going to be one and one here. So Zimmerman will shoot the free throws. That's why now in the bonus, those are such tough fouls because now the Spuds walked all the way down the floor, didn't have to do anything, and have a chance to get two points. Zimmerman's first free throw is good. Spuds lead 34-33. I said at the top of the broadcast in the girls game that the shooting might struggle tonight because the new backdrops and everything doesn't look like that's really been an issue for either team, to be honest with you. So what do I know, right? <laughs> you know a lot, though, Riley. I'll <laughs> give you credit for that. Like that trivia question you asked me at the end of the girls' broadcast. That's right. Here's Hatterberg driving inside yeah, and a travel. Too many steps, yeah. It was a good, really good idea. I think he just kind of tried to slow down a jump stop next time, and he's going to be able to finish that one over the top. Here is Zara Zua controlling. Guarded by Cook. Bounce pass to Battle. Find Zimmerman. Zimmerman to Zarazua. Over to Hoff. Hoff dumps it off to Zarazua. Here's Thiel just in the corner. And a travel. Try to do a nifty move to get free, but can't take too many steps, Riley. Well, he could probably have benefited from a jump stop as well. Just got going with the ball, didn't know exactly where he was going with the offense, just got a little stagnant for the Spuds, but they've been getting better in the half-court offense as this game has progressed. Even going back to last night, half-court offense wasn't very fluid, wasn't very good, to be honest. And now, tonight, they've been a lot better in the half-court, getting open looks and getting cutters. Here is a Tom Mensa, deflected by Thielges, good job from him. Fight for the ball, jump ball, and it'll go in favor of Moorhead. That was a great job by Thielges, disrupting the pass and leading to the jump ball. Yeah, a lot of teams, they'll chart tip passes just because I'm, they can, like I said, the turnovers affect the outcome of the game. How do you get turnovers to tip passes? And so you might not always get the turnover, but if you constantly have your hand in the passing lanes like Field just did there, you're going to like the result in the end. Nice move by Zara Zua. Almost lost it to Cook. Zimmerman, a good looking three. In and out. Smith gets it back. Zimmerman almost left him in the dust there. Zimmerman, the spin, the drive, the air ball. Boarded. Rebound, excuse me, by Hatterberg. Down court, no good from Little. Here is Hoff in transition off the glass. Smith couldn't get the putback. Hatterberg the rebound. A minute to play on the first half promo scoreboard. Mensa falling away, he can't hit it. Here comes Zarazua and the Spuds in transition. Zarazua off the glass, no good. Up ahead to Cook. Here's Little in transition, tried passing it back. Hatterberg's there, and a little miscommunication, and it'll go the other way. Everybody take a deep breath. This, <laughs> this is when, the, like I was saying, the teams want the pace to be fast, not hectic. That was a hectic couple of minutes in that instance. It just takes somebody to calm it down, and that pass out of bounds eventually calmed it down. But both teams have just got to settle down and just play within themselves. And there's still a lot of time left, even in the second half. 30 seconds here, battle underneath. The feed from Zimmerman, and the Spuds go up three. Big possession here that Raiders can hold for the last shot, play for either the tie or being down by one going into the break. But this is a big stop, big opportunity for the Spuds to get some momentum going in the locker room. Shot clock is off. Mensa over to Hatterberg. 
finds Cook in the corner. Off the mark, the putback is good from DeVries. But the Spuds thrown more haymakers than Roseville so far as they lead by one, 36-35. And like the girls game, this championship game has lived up to expectations. It has, you can see kind of the deflated look on Matt Ellingson's face on the sideline and just because his team didn't box out. They did everything right. They got them to miss the shot. Maybe not everything, they got a wide open look eventually. These guys just didn't box out, and unfortunately, I have played for Matt, so I've been on the receiving end of uh, <laughs> a few of those looks of uh, not boxing out. But overall, the Spuds just got to do a little better job taking care of the ball. I think both teams really got to do a little better job taking care of the ball and eliminating those hectic possessions. If Roseville wants to play that way, and if for Roseville, if Morad wants to play that way, that's fine, but it's going to be whichever team can be calmer in the second half, play within themselves, slow it down just a little bit, there's a difference between playing fast and playing too fast. I think right so far it's been too fast. I agree, Riley. We'll be back for the second half. Got yeah, Just for Kicks coming up at halftime. Just for Kicks is coming up indeed at halftime. Thanks for reminding me, Riley. And if you, for guys, for people that are staying for the basketball game, we'll have second half coverage on Spuds TV in a few moments.
Valley Alignment and Auto Repair has provided the FM area with vehicle service and repairs since 1978. They perform your vehicle service needs from oil changes and brakes to transmission and engine rebuilds. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair is a proud sponsor of Spuds Athletics and wish all the athletes and families a great 2022-23 school year and sports season. Don't work out where you won't work out. Blueprint Personal Training. At Blueprint, you'll work directly with an experienced personal trainer and nutrition coach in our brand new private gym. Tell us about your fitness goals, and we'll provide the personalized workouts and motivation to get the results you want to see. Training, nutrition, accountability. Blueprint Personal Training. BlueprintFargo.com. Moorhead Dental Associates, you'll get the very best care and state-of-the-art technology. Dr. Scatbold and Dr. Johnson are now accepting new patients. Call or stop in to Moorhead Dental Associates. We are The Breakdown. For almost two decades, we've published the most comprehensive yearbooks on Minnesota high school sports and run the best in-season and off-season events. We cover every corner of the state. We are The Breakdown. Boss DXT snowplows are tough to beat. Featuring dual trip tech, flared wings, and optional D-force for improved scraping and backdragging performance. Choose from three different sizes in steel, stainless steel, and poly. The Boss DXT is built to restore order. Your home for Boss snowplows is Burt's Truck Equipment on Highway 75 North and Moorhead. Hi, I'm Katie with First Community Credit Union, and we're here in Fargo, North Dakota at Bailey's PDR. So what made you choose FCCU for your business needs? I love the customer support that they give, that I have people's phone numbers that I can reach whenever I need to. Uh, when you're conducting business, you don't have hours to hopefully make up a, a financial decision, so sometimes you need those questions answered, and at FCCU, they're there always for you. 36-35, the Spuds lead coming out of halftime. And Riley, we've seen a lot of positives from the Spuds team so far against a really good Roseville Raiders team. There has been a lot of positives. The, the defensive intensity has been there. The ability to get out in transition has been there. And really, I think the biggest difference 
compared from last night is the half court offense has been better. They look to be more in a flow. Now on the flip side of that, a lot of positives. There were still some negatives, still too many turnovers. I think the Spuds got going a little bit faster sometimes than they would have liked. I'm guessing in the second half here, they're gonna try and play a little bit more under control. I'm guessing Coach Matt Ellingson is gonna ask his team, play off of two feet, play under control. They wanna play fast, but that, like I said before, there's a difference between playing fast and too fast. At points, it was a little too fast in the first half. I agree, Riley, and we will see what Roseville will do in this half on both sides of the ball, but Roseville, they are a very, very good team with a lot of strengths. Some might say more strengths than the Spuds. However, Moorhead has been able to be up to par with the Raiders. They have, and Roseville, what you can expect from them is exactly what we've seen. They're gonna be a physical basketball team. They're long. They had a little press there for a little bit towards the start of the game. They dropped back out of that. We'll see if they go back to that at all. It'll be kind of interesting to see how they want to manage that throughout this game. But overall, I think it's going to come down to who can get more stops. That's who's going to win the game. More stops, more free throws, and also, of course, I've mentioned it before, who does not turn the ball over. Absolutely. Turnovers are huge in any game, regardless of what it is, especially in basketball. You know it more than I do as you're on the floor part of Matt Allingson's team for quite a while. Was it four years, right? Yeah, I was in the program for four years. Uh, Matt, actually, I played for him on the JV team um, my junior year, and then my senior season, he it was his first season taking over as head coach. So I got to know Matt pretty well, and uh, yeah, I was a part of Spud Basketball for quite some time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, played all the way all the way up through senior year and was fortunate enough to be a part of the high school program, ninth through 12th grade. So yeah, I've seen a few games, and. The thing I'll tell you, too, is really jealous of this gym they get to play in now. That's why you're so knowledgeable, <laughs> all that basketball experience. That's right. Intercepted by Zimmerman. What a start to the, to the second half. I almost said first half because I got so excited. <laughs> right out of the gate, Dylan Zimmerman with the sledgehammer. Those live ball turnovers, Thomas, you see it right there. There's just simply no one back to play defense. Easy bucket for Dylan Zimmerman. They don't get any easier than that. A real high percentage look, one might say. Stolen by Smith. Over the head of Theogis. Here's Zarazua fading away. And a blocking foul. And the blocking foul that time is because Zarazua didn't really go into the defender at all and get some contact. And it was back for Roseville. It was Kellen Little. And so we talked about Matt Ellingson. I was coached by him. I was also coached by his brother, Andrew Ellingson, in middle school basketball. Andrew, I, they don't, we don't have the official stats on this, but he's got to be one of the all-time leading charge takers in Moorhead Spud history. There's an art to taking a charge. He'll be the first to tell you that. I learned it from him when I was playing youth basketball. You can't shy away from the contact. He kind of tried to sell that charge. You're going to get called up for a block every time. And a really nice job of Zara, from Zara Zua not just going straight through. You see a lot of guys trying to just plow their way to the rim. He kind of faded away a little bit, but still got a good look at the rim. Zara Zua hits both free throws and... As you mentioned about taking contact, Zarazu is better at doing that than anybody as Smith gets the rebound. Defense is looking very sharp to start the second half. Field just driving baseline, loses the ball. Here comes Hatterberg in transition for Roseville. Dumped off to DeVries, here's Cook. Over to Mensa. Mensa almost had it taken away by Thielges. Here's Little. Out to Cook, nice fake on Smith. Driving to the cup and he's fouled. So back on my spiel about the art of taking a charge, you also have to be in position. That time Zarazuba gets the blocking foul because he's just a little bit out of position, tried to slide in at the very end. I like the effort, I really do, but at the same time, if you're Zarazuba, you gotta remember, he went into halftime with two fouls. That's a quick third one he picked up. It looks like Coach Ellingson's gonna leave him in just because of the dynamicness he brings to the offense. Dynamicness, I don't even know if that's a word. Just kind of made it up <laughs> on the go. But he brings a lot to the offense and, of course, a lot to the defense. He's their point guard. He runs the show. Ellingson's going to leave him in there. He's got to be careful now not to pick up his fourth. Probably don't try and take any charges is what I would say. Zara Zua is definitely a huge piece to this team as it's taken away by Hatterberg. Deep three from Cook. Short. Zimmerman there for the board. Here comes Zara Zua. Guarded by DeVries. 
Zarazu looking around, finds Smith, baseline, inside the battle, and he puts it up and in. We saw that back in the first half. Smith drives, battle cuts behind, and a really nice pass. I think Smith could have went up himself, but got his teammate a better look. You love to see that as a coach and really as a fan. Here is Cook. He finds DeVries over to Hatterberg. Here is Little. He dishes it out to Mensa. Mensa finds DeVries at the top of the key. Here's Cook. Shot clock at seven. Can't get the bounce. Zara Zua the board. Over to Smith. Smith the drive, kick out, battle. Battle drives downhill, tried feeding it to Smith inside and it was out of bounds on Cook. It'll stay with the Spuds with 26 left on the shot clock. A little bit of a, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Battle trying to feed it back to Smith and get him a bucket. Just wasn't able to quite get the pass through, but a really good idea. I like the ball movement right now from the Spuds. It has never been stagnant in the second half. Battle with the drive, can't get it to go. Here comes Mensa up court. Oh, what a nice move by Mensa. He gets it to fall. He did all that himself going coast to coast to cut the lead to three. He didn't even use the backboard either. Just some guys have a knack of finding a way to put it in the hole. Zarazua gets fouled. And he'll go to the line for two. Zarazua has 12 points on the night. Looks to make it 14 with these two free throws. He's one for one in this sequence. And you can see Jamen Cook talking to his son over there. You wonder what he's telling Jamen Cook Jr. And both free throws are good. Here comes Mensa. Hatterberg the drive through the lane, kick out to Cook. Over to DeVries. DeVries a step back three. Foot may have been on the line, but regardless, it's a miss. And here comes Zara Zua. He turns it around, almost has it stolen away. Nice move by Zara Zua. Zimmerman inside, battle. Couldn't finish. Strong effort from Rain Battle. And here comes Cook. Drive into the cup, and he finishes past Zimmerman. That was pretty. And Smith got hit in the face. No foul is called. So Thielges will take the three and nail it. Little bit of redemption there for his teammate who got hit in the face. And let's see if Smith is okay. He seems to be. He's just shaking up a little bit. And it was Jamin Cook who came in. He, he got hit going towards the hoop. He got the finish. Maybe that's what his dad was telling him on the sideline. Hey, go, go to the rim and score. That's a pretty, pretty good thing to tell him, I'd say. And it, the Roseville bench felt like he got fouled on the way back. I couldn't really tell. I think he just got kind of tangled up and caught Smith on the way back. And uh, unfortunately, shook him up a little bit, but Spuds are still able to get the three-pointer. So you just got to hope that uh, DJ's okay. But a really nice job of getting out in transition. They, they made the bucket on one end, but it just goes to show you how it doesn't always have to be a miss where you get out in transition. And that was always preached when I was back in the program, still is today, get the ball out of the rim and we go. We're not gonna walk the ball up the floor and that's what they did and found an open shooter. And Owen Thielges, you mentioned this in yesterday's game against DGF, not a real three point shooter, more of an inside guy, likes to get rebounds, physical player, but that time he's able to get a three pointer in. Hopefully that could lead to him making more shots. Yeah, I think he can shoot it out to the arc and there's a difference between guys who can shoot it to the arc but guys who maybe should and want to shoot out to the arc. I'm guessing, I mean, everyone likes to shoot three-pointers, but I'm guessing he prefers to be down closer to the basket, like I said, getting rebounds. If you make them, there's no, re I mean, there's no reason he shouldn't be taking three-pointers if he's open like he is. But I think he'll be the first to tell you he'd prefer to be down low making layups as opposed to trying to shoot three-pointers. Cook will inbound it to Mesa, or excuse me, Mensa. Spuds up by six. Mensa loses the handle for the moment, gets rid of it to Cook. Here is Little. Back to Mensa. Mensa the drive, cutting through the lane. 
taken away by DeVries. Here's Hatterberg driving inside. A swarm of spuds and a foul will be called. Tough to tell who the foul was even on. There were so many black shirts in there and then with the spuds across the chest. But somebody got him on the way to the hoop and a really tough break really. Zarazuba brought it down, had it just stripped away. And <laughs> TJ Smith was already at darn near the other three point line. He thought they were out in transition. It led to kind of a odd man rush in a sense. They, they had numbers, able to get to the line, shoot a couple free throws. Hatterberg cuts the lead to five with his first make, and he hits both. So 47-43 spuds on the first half promo scoreboard. Zarazua working on Cook. Back to Zarazua, over to Battle, guarded by Little. Across to Jones. Here's Zimmerman, over to Smith. Dump off to Battle in the corner. Shot clock at 10. Jones over to Zimmerman, three foul. He'll have three chances at the stripe. Just about the number one rule on defense, never foul a jump shooter. Referee was right there, it happened right in front of him, pretty good view of it. And Mensa kind of looked for a second, I think more so in disbelief that he did it more than not thinking he fouled him. He pretty clearly got him on the arm and he knew it from the start. And you kind of got it like in retrospect, the Raiders kind of caught a break as after Zimmerman missed that three because it could have turned into a four point play. It could have, it could have. Zimmerman hits both, or excuse me, two of the three. He might hit both. He's good at shooting free throws. <laughs> 49 43, Zimmerman with 17 as he makes all three. I'm just, I called it, I called <laughs> yeah. it. Points for me. <laughs> Here is Mensa. Dump off to Cook. Intercepted by Zimmerman. Here we go. Oh, he missed it. So Zimmerman will have to settle for the jumper, the wide open jumper. He almost took the roof off his building again. Hatterberg lines up a three. Rebound Zarazua. I can't really say anything because I've never even tried to dunk it. <laughs> but we've now seen him miss a few dunks, and it's great that he's getting the steals, but I think maybe at some point, I mean, it, it doesn't need to kill the rim. Let's put it that way. <laughs> maybe just calm down just a hair. But They're I, brand new. Exactly. They're brand exactly, new rims. But a nice job to at least bounce back and get the jumper. We'll see if he gets another steal. I'm kind of excited to see if maybe he just goes in, maybe just lightly sets it in, gets the two points. Almost a carbon copy play of the first play of the second half. Here's Hatterberg, hesitates, finds Mensa, guarded by Jones, over to Cook, guarded by Zarazua, jumper, no good, off the mark, rebound Zimmerman. Spuds keep getting stops, it's where they've made their money, and I said it at halftime, I said it really at the start of the game, it's gonna come down to who can get stops. Right now, Moorhead's been the team doing that. Zimmerman three, you bet! DZ again. And the Spuds go up 12. Here is Mensa. Trying to pick up a screen from Little. Does, guarded by Zimmerman. Mensa drives, kick out Hatterberg in the corner. Driving baseline, the reverse. No good. Mensa the rebound. And he's able to finish with Smith all over him. And he cuts the lead to 10. Zarazua working on Cook. Poked away by Cook. And an easy deuce for Jaman Cook. Good defense from him, creating the score. They got up and pressured the basketball. And Zarazua has just got to be a little tighter with the ball. Smith. Oh, what a finish. TJ Smith. Pulling a little rabbit out of his hat on that one. Back to a 10-point lead. Mensa the drive, kick out, open on the wing, three. Rebound, Battle. Battle weaving his way through traffic. Smith to Zarazua, the reverse, no good. Mensa the rebound. And he'll slow it down. And this 
is championship basketball right here, Riley. Poked away, D'Angelo Jones! That's why Jones is in there. He hasn't quite developed a full offensive game. I think you can see it's coming. He's in there. He shines on the defensive end of the floor, and you could just see how fired up he was getting that stop. And he just forced him to dribble off his own foot. I mean, just getting up and pressuring. We saw it in the girls' game. De La Salle did a lot of that. And now Jones must have been watching that first game as they sat on, on the end of the floor. And he said, hey, I can do that too. <laughs> Absolutely. Zara Zoo with a spin. Kick out. Hoff, three. Rebound there by Horton. And Jameer Horton will take it up. Hatterberg almost lost his footing. Race for the ball. Won by Thielges. Thielges to battle, battle inside, won't go, and out of bounds was battle on the baseline, trying to get the rebound, and it'll go to the Raiders. And they didn't get the bucket, but a lot of guys in that situation, they knew it was gonna be, at the very least, over and back, if Roseville went back and got it, but Thiel just, just out hustled everyone, got his buddy, Rain Battle, a pretty good look at the rim, just was unable to finish. Raiders down 10 with 10 minutes to go. Good defense on Smith, over to Mensa, guarded by Battle. Mensa the drive, kick out in the corner for Hatterberg. Hatterberg slicing his way through the paint to score. And the lead is cut to single digits again. Smith directing traffic. Here's Thielges, Zimmerman wants it. He'll try a three. Almost, Smith the board, and he finishes. Right place at the right time again. He didn't just try a three, he tried a really deep three. He tried it all the way from Fargo, he as did. you can say. He did, it's a shot that he can make. I don't know if it's necessarily a shot that Coach Ellingson wants him to take. Really aggressive drive that time from Mensa. Gonna go to the line and shoot a couple free throws, but you gotta give DJ Smith the credit getting down, another offensive rebound, able to finish. Mensa obviously very aggressive player on both sides as he showed it right there. And he has a chance to cut the lead to single digits once again as he makes that free throw. Mensa with 14 here in the game and only one foul. He has committed and he makes both free throws. So the lead's cut to eight and Halo low comes in and here's some press defense from the Raiders trying to keep the spuds off balance offensively Smith using the handles here's Zimmerman Zimmerman in trouble gets it to Thielges and it'll be off of the Raiders and it'll stay with the spuds and the coaching staff for Roseville is furious. Well, I think they're saying that their guy did tip the ball, but Thiel just finished through the play and almost threw it out of bounds. I was about to say, ball don't lie for their sake, because <laughs> they almost got the steal anyway. But a tough call, and I really could have seen it going either way. Here's Zimmerman, another three. Short. The putback from Thiel just is no good. It'll go the other way. And you mentioned this before, we don't know if Zimmerman should be taking these sh sorts of shots, but when you're confident, you're gonna try to make as many shots as you can. That's right, that's right. He definitely can fill it up. I think just gotta be, he's gotta be looking for a great shot, sort of a good shot. And Field is on the rebound. He saw Matt Ellingson telling him, just bring it down. You don't need to make the hero play and try and put it in. Just bring it back down and reset our offense. Hatterberg with a nice scoop and score. And the lead's cut to six. Field is the drive, and he finishes. Once, oh. a, once again, sorry to interrupt. A made bucket, they get down the floor, and they're able to finish in transition. The Spuds have done such a good job of that. Much better, I would say, than last night, even though they scored more points than they have tonight. But right now, they're playing against a much better Roseville team. Hatterberg over to Lau. Lau loses it for the moment, gets it back, guarded by Hoff. Shot clock at eight. Crowd on their feet. Hatterberg the drive, and he finishes again. Nate Hatterberg 
just eviscerating the paint, and it's 61-55. I really like his game. He's gotten to the cup pretty much at will, and he's also finished inside. His Rain Battle cutting inside. Great feed from Smith. Smith and Battle, they've connected a couple of times tonight. And Rain Battle, you gotta give him all the credit being able to do those backdoor cuts. He got himself some easy looks. Pass underneath for Lowe. Jump ball. And it'll go to Moorhead. Subs come in, Zarazua and Jones. And we'll see if the Raiders do a little press they do with Horton. Here is Jones on the wing. Over to Zarazua. Oh, nice feed from Zarazua. He gets it right back, and he finishes with the jumper. Silky smooth, Zarazua. Here's Mensa cutting inside. And a bad pass intended for Hagman. It'll go the other way. This is really danger time now for Roseville. Clock under seven minutes, down by 10. I feel like right now is when they've got to make a run if they're going to come back and win this game. Spuds with most of the momentum right now. They're up 10, 6.48 to go. Jones cutting inside. Really good take from D'Angelo Jones. We talked about his ability on the defensive end. That's what he can do on the offensive end. A really good downhill driver able to finish that time. And a foul going to be called on Smith. A reach-in foul. That'll be DJ Smith's third foul of the game. And Lowe will inbound for Roseville. And he's gonna have to find somebody, he does. That's Horton. Here's Mensa. picks up a screen. And loses the ball to Rain Battle. Here comes Rain, driving, and he's fouled. A blocking foul is gonna be called on Horton. And Rain Battle will shoot two. Battle just takes it so aggressively to the rim. I just love the way he plays. It doesn't matter if he gets fouled or not. He plays it as if, though, there is never going to be a foul called. Goes up strong to the rim. Just a, got going a little too fast that time, a little too strong off the backboard. But able to get the free throw. I talked about Roseville possibly going on a run. Well, the Spuds look like they're trying to stretch this thing out and give themselves a real nice cushion. 13-point lead for Moorhead. Battle looks to make it a 14-point lead with this free throw. Short, Jones gets it back. So the Spuds have chance, a chance for more points. Bounce pass to Battle. Battle tried getting it to Zarazua, who cut inside. Good job there from Roseville. Here's Mensa on the attack. No good, rebound Horton, and he hits the deck. It'll stay with the Raiders. Inbound to Mensa, guarded by Zarazua. Mensa driving baseline. He can't get the first shot, but he puts it up on the second attempt, and he'll go to the line for a three-point play. What a fantastic play, able to finish it off the backboard while hanging in the air on a rebound and absorbing the contact from the foul. A really, really exceptional finish at the rim. That might just be the play that keeps them in the game and gives them a chance to get the comeback, but that clock ticking down now under six minutes, still even if he makes his free throw, a 10-point lead for the Spuds. I would guess, like I mentioned in the girls' game, probably a full-court press at some point for Roseville if it stays in this sort of margin of lead. And the lead's cut to 10 as Mensa makes the and one. Zarazua will take the foul and he's slow to get up. He took a big hit from Cook who is all up in Zarazua's business. Cook's been a pretty solid defender, like especially on the perimeter and with that full, per, full court press. He has, he's been a good defender for them this evening. You see him again up all 
over Zarazua, even at his own free throw line. But Zarazua with a nice spin, almost made him slip there on the court. Zimmerman looking around, Zarazua three, you bet. It's really good action that time. Zarazua goes down to the block. He's gonna set a back pick and, and then he actually gets the screen, a little pin down action to the top of the key. That's a play that, I forget what we called it, but we ran that when I was in high school still. And either you're looking for that first guy for an easy layup, and that's where all the attention's drawn. You get then you, get, you screen for the screener, a little pin down action for a three pointer. Good execution from the Spuds and good call from Matt Ellingson. Zara Zua has 19 points in this game. And Mensa hits the first free throw. 71 59 on the first half promo scoreboard. 5 26 to play. And curious to see what head coach Jamen Cook is discussing with the ref. Looked like Battle just got tangled up uh, in the free throw lane line with Halo low. So Zarazua, smart move, just says, you know what, you go out to half court, I'll handle it in here. <laughs> Field just getting ready to check in. He'll check in for Battle. And a press look once again for the Raiders. It'll be Zara Zua and Cook. Over to Smith. Smith. Bounce pass to Zimmerman. Fades away. It's good. Nothing but nylon. Dylan Zimmerman with 24. Menza three. Right in Dylan Zimmerman's face. And a little payback. Smith takes it up. Inside, Jones. Just textbook from the Spuds. And a charge gonna be called on low. He just got going downhill. Looked like he said he's gonna take matters into his own hands. Lowered the shoulder, a good call from the referee. The play before that, you could see just the attention that Zimmerman draws. He was in the corner. And one of the defenders went out to take him in the corner. More times than not, you're gonna see a transition defense. You wanna start at the rim and build outwards. Well, the defender just went for him in the corner, allowed Smith to go down, drop it down to D'Angelo Jones, who's really putting together a nice second half. I like the way he's been playing, both on the defensive end and he's developed a lot more on the offensive end this half. I said earlier he's probably still looking just to find what he can do on the offensive end. I think he's found what he is. That's a downhill driver and getting around the rim and using his athleticism. Jones has been such a valuable piece to the Spuds bench all season so far, and another foul. And Roseville is over the limit. And Zarazua will shoot two. Zarazua will shoot the one of one. He now has 20 points on the game. And Riley, you gotta admit, after the slow start for the Spuds this season, starting two and five, they have shown themselves that like they are a much better team than they think they are, playing against a team like Roseville, who has been really good overall this season. Well, head coach Matt Ellingson said they played a tough schedule, which they did a couple of the few of the top teams really in North Dakota, and they, they found themselves with maybe a record that they didn't love. Now they came back to the home tournament, got a win last night against DGF, a solid win here tonight against Roseville. Also we have a technical foul assessed to one of the Moorhead Spuds. I'm trying to figure out who exactly it, it was. Fielders is talking to- yeah, I think it might have been him. Talking to Coach Ellingson. Ellingson might just be telling them that you can't do that as Mensa will hit the free throw as it gets the bounce. Leads cut to 13. Well, I think what he might be telling him too is now they get two free throws without having to do anything and they're gonna get the ball on top of that. I think he's just telling them, you know what, we're up by 14. 
whatever, whatever it is in that moment, I don't know if he said something to the ref. I, don't, I think I saw someone kind of tap the ball away from the ref. I don't know if that's what it was. I wish we had replay. <laughs> I would like to get on the look at it. But I think he's just telling him, you got to be smart in that moment. And, you know, it's a learning experience. Like, it is for everyone, especially at this level. And so you know, he didn't take him out of the game. He, he just said, you know what, you got to be smart in that moment of, hey, let's not do anything silly here. Give them any chance to come back in this game. I agree, Riley. We will, we will be right back after this timeout from the Raiders. The Spuds lead by 12 with 4.30 to go. Spuds lead 77-65 with 4.20 to go. Backward pass from Zimmerman goes right into the hands of Cook. DeVries finds Cook again. Cook the spin, the fake, and the finish. Jamen Cook is cooking up a show on both sides with four minutes to play. I said we'd probably see a full court press from Roseville. You see it here on that possession. I'm guessing that's what the timeout was for to put that in place. 10 point lead, Spud just gotta take care of the ball, run their offense and try and get good looks down the stretch. S DJ Smith almost got the end one, he'll get two free throws. And he just bullied his way to the rack. And this right here is winning time. Last four minutes of the game, up by 10 points. You've played well enough to win the game. Now you have to close it out. We'll see how mature this Spuds team can be. Got a bunch of veteran guys on the team. They've been here before. They know what it takes to win. Now up by 11, possibly 12. Don't do anything dumb on the defensive end. Run your offense on the other side of the floor. Don't turn the ball over, and you're going to like where you're at in 345 and counting. It's just about keeping it simple. Not too many, don't have to make it complicated. Spuds up 11, 3.35 to go. Cook working on Jones. Kick out to Hatterberg. Hatterberg the drive on Zimmerman, and he finishes. 78-69, and the Raiders lay off the press defense. Well, I don't think head coach Jamin Cook wanted them to, because he kind of looked at all of them like, what are you doing? Why are you all back on defense? <laughs> so I think, they might have a little talking to about that. Smith working his way underneath, trying to carve some space, and he draws the foul again. DJ Smith with 11 points in this game. And the Spuds lineup just really complements each other so well. Zarazua runs the show with the ball handler up top. He kind of gets them into their action, but he can score himself. DJ Smith. Doesn't shoot it a whole lot from the outside. He likes to get down low and play in the paint. Same with Rain Battle, kind of those two wings. They don't really have a post player. I mean, Phil just kind of plays that role when he's in. And then Zimmerman, of course, is kind of the do-it-all guy. They've got a group of five guys, and then coming off the bench tonight, we've seen Hoff as well as D'Angelo Jones. Those guys just kind of come in, fill in some minutes, try to complement. But really, those core five guys who Coach Ellingson has gone with tonight, and they've, uh, they've been pretty solid on the floor. Absolutely, and DJ Smith has been pretty much the monkey wrench of the team, a very helpful tool in crucial situations. Like he's a facilitator and he can shoot, and he's in trouble here as Mensa has him in a straight jacket for the moment. And good attempt from Jones to feed it to Smith on the cut, and it's into the bleachers. 
And Coach Ellingson gonna take a full timeout here. Just wants to talk it over with his team. Give him that same reminder I was just talking about. Up by 11 points, 2.44 to go. Don't do anything silly with the ball. We don't need to be downhill attacking the rim. We just need to run our offense. There's a shot clock, of course, that hasn't been that in years past. Back when I played, there was no shot clock, so you might be even trying to waste multiple minutes off the clock. Now you can take at least 35 seconds off and then get back on defense. Don't want to let them get out and transition. Spuds lead 80-69 to when we return from this timeout. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair has provided the FM area with vehicle service and repairs since 1978. They perform your vehicle service needs from oil changes and brakes to transmission and engine rebuilds. Valley Alignment and Auto Repair is a proud sponsor of Spuds Athletics and wish all the athletes and families a great 2022-23 school year and sports season. 80 to 69 Spuds. Moorhead's trying to hang on to win the holiday tournament as it has been an all around terrific performance from the Spuds here tonight. Zarazuda inbound. Battle cutting inside. It has been that kind of night for the Spuds offensively as they go back up 13. Here's Hatterberg over to Mensa. Mensa inside of DeVries, counted and one. So that right there I think is pretty much what Coach Ellingson did not want. They did a great job on the baseline out of bounds. Rain battle, like I said, I am loving his game. I've only seen him play back-to-back -back nights here. He gets to the rim, he cuts hard, but that right there, there's just no reason to foul. You're up by 13, he got, the, you know what? Give him credit, they got, to the, they got to the rim, they got a good look. You don't need to foul them, they'll give him a chance at a three-point play, possibly a miss and an offensive rebound. I mean, just give him the bucket, set it up, go down. All it's gonna come down to really, don't turn the ball over, make some free throws, get out of here with a tournament championship. And like you said, no stupid mistakes at this point in the game. Zara Zua finds Smith. Smith inside, battle again! Carbon copy play! He's been everywhere in the second half, and the lob goes AWOL. And you know, Thomas in hockey, they always say goal scorers get to the front of the net. You see a foul on the spuds. A better foul that time, not allowing the basket. They always say goal scorers, they go to the front of the net. They find themselves in front of the net in good spots. Rain Battle does that, except here on the basketball floor. He just goes to the rim. And give DJ Smith a heck of a lot of credit. He has found Rain Battle on multiple occasions. That's the third time I can remember, just off the top of my head, of him finding a backdoor cutter. There's been other guys that have found Battle but he's carving out a nice little role in just making cuts and getting open. There's so many baskets to be had if you can just cut. That's all it comes down to sometimes. You can cut to the rim, you can score. You don't need to be a good scorer that can dribble and make all these moves. Everyone gets so caught up in the one-on-one -on -one game. You can just set screens and cut to the rim. You can, you, can, you can score a few points. And here's a mistake from Zara Zua. Blocked by Smith! Get it out of here, he says. There is a foul though on Smith, but still a very nasty rejection nonetheless. But at this point in the game, it's like a hit and miss sort of, sort of deal. You get a nice block, potentially a nice highlight reel, but you're still only up by 11 and they have a chance to get more points in this sequence here. Well, he misses the first free throw, but more points with the clock stopped. If they make the bucket, Clock keeps running as you take it out of bounds. How the clock stops, you get a chance to score without the clock moving at all. And the reason there's a foul is up top it was clean. He kind of used his hand to push off his shoulder and get the block. So a really good call from the referee, to be honest. Now, the student section didn't love it, but I think that's a pretty fair call. Field just trying to get free. Find Zimmerman, guarded by Mensa. Zimmerman catches a double team. And a timeout called smartly by Matt Ellingson as Zimmerman almost lost it. And Ellingson smartly takes a timeout with his team up 10. Yeah, I've been to uh, a few high school basketball games <laughs> in, my, in my 21 years on this earth, and I'll tell you, it's never easy to win, even no matter how much you're up by at the end of the game, because 
the pressure just it always gets to a team. It just does. That's why it's high school basketball. It's what makes it fun, really. You're never out of a game. And right now, what Madeline is telling his team, they're doing a good job getting the first inbound in. They're doing a great job at that. But then what's happened every time, we saw Zarazua a couple times, then we saw Zimmerman. They're just going head down, dribbling right to the corner. And Roseville's just saying, yep, come across the half court line. We'll take it right in the corner and we'll trap you. And Zarazua, you saw him kind of turn his head, almost got a poke from behind. Zimmerman, kind of a similar thing. How you beat the press, you need cutters through the middle of the floor. They can't trap you in the middle. They just can't. They, they need the sideline to help them out on the half court line. Get some cutters through the middle. Inbound, you should have two guys, one right after another, kind of cutting through constantly. And once you cut through, you come back and find yourself open in the middle. You see a lot of guys, they cut through, and then they just kind of wait at the end of the floor. You're not, you're not going to be depressed by dribbling through it. It's never, I don't want to say it's never been done, but right. for the most part, that's not how you do it. you got to find a way to pass through the press and be strong with the basketball. 84-74, Spuds lead just under two to play in regulation. Smith has it guarded by Lowe and a travel. And a couple of mistakes from the Spuds in the late going here. A couple of fouls and then a travel. Here's DeVries. Oh, a nice cut inside from Lowe. And just like that, it is an eight point game and a timeout called by Roseville. And you said it, just like that, eight point game. And that might seem, oh yeah, the Spuds are fine. They're still up by eight minute 30 to go, which they probably are fine. That's probably a fair assessment. But they just gotta find a way to beat this press. And then after you beat the press, you gotta still run your offense. I think that's a really common thing you see. They, get, they beat the press and that's fine. You gotta still run your offense. You still have to score with a shot clock. You still want something moving towards the rim. And it looked like the Spuds kind of beat the press that time they were just content. So a timeout taken by Roseville. They're gonna throw on the press again. You know it's coming. So how do you beat it? Matt Ellingson's gonna draw something up for him. He's gonna figure it out. Now it's about execution. How do you beat the press and how do you be strong with the ball if you just don't turn the ball over? There's not enough possessions in the game for them to not have to foul if you just take the shot clock and don't turn it over. Spuds trying to get back on their feet after a few mistakes. Smith will take it up. Caught in a double team, loses the ball. He'll go in favor of Roseville. And hold on. The Raiders are still hanging on for dear life. Well, they are, and he got he beat the press, he dribbled through it, and then he's just out of control, and the referees aren't going to give you any foul calls. Really nice block by Rain Battle. But going back to breaking the press, the referees aren't going to give you a whole lot of foul calls this point in the game if you're not going to be strong with the ball. And that time, B.J. Smith wasn't very strong with the ball, but it's a learning experience. They're going to get better at breaking a the press. They're going to get better at being strong with the ball. They've just got to take it one step at a time and try and close this thing out right now. Here's Hatterberg on the inbound. Takes it back. Mensa briefly caught in a double team. Going up strong. Counted and one. A Tom Mensa. Making things interesting with a minute 15 to go. And you gotta you, you see what Rain Battle is trying to do. And I you can't fault the effort. He's trying to get over on help side defense. But it's just a heck of a play by Mensa. And, Good call by the referee. Battle was inside that restricted arc. Another and one, chance to make it a five point game. They were just up by eight, only 20 seconds came off the clock. Now they're only up by five. We'll see how they can handle this. Now look for a cutter in the middle. Right there, it's Thielges, boom. Thielges caught in a double team. Smith ahead to Jones. Jones inside to Zimmerman. He loses the ball and a shove. And a little bit of a bailout foul, it was a foul. And Zimmerman's going to go to the line to shoot free throws. But a, a good job of breaking the press. Then they got to remember, it, we, they don't need to score anymore, really. They don't need to play to score. Take some time off the shot clock, run the offense, unless you have an absolute wide open layup. Run some more clock off that, run the shot clock down. Nice free throw from Dylan Zimmerman. It's what it's going to come down to. Strong with the ball, making free throws. The Spuds should come out with a win. Big free throw coming up for Zimmerman. Thielges and Jones get set. Smith in the backcourt with Cook. And he hits both. Final minute of regulation. Mensa 
finds Hatterberg. Hatterberg spins on Zimmerman, finds Cook. Back to Hatterberg. Hatterberg a spin, loses the ball. Here comes Jones. And they're just gonna try to chew the clock as much as possible, but Rain Battle will seal the deal. Once again, cutting inside. 88-79 on the first half promo scoreboard. Those two for me have been the players of the game and what a fitting end and kind of it seems like might be the dagger. But what a fitting way Jones gets it, calmly goes down the floor, gets it to Rain Battle who just goes right to the front of the rim. Dylan Zimmerman down, little hurt came down hard after he missed that one. Looks like he's gonna be okay. He hit the deck pretty hard there. He did, they're gonna, they're gonna get him out of the game, but he walked off under his own power, which you like to see. They just a little shaken up. But going back to the play before, Jones calmly got out of the floor, settled it down, got under control. He wasn't looking to make the hero play, just pass it to his buddy Rain Battle, who was wide open for a layup. And if they're gonna give you a layup, you're gonna take it. And Mensa will foul him. That'll be Mensa's second, I believe, of the game. And you can see Coach Ellingson talking to DJ Smith. That time he dribbled it, he did get fouled. But right after he got fouled, he saw a steal potentially going the other way. It could have been a disaster. Coach Ellingson said, just put it on your chin. Take a couple dribbles, put it on your chin, be strong with the ball. And it's a learning experience right now and a great job really from Coach Ellingson of pulling him aside because it's pretty easy to sit there and say, you know what, I got fouled, but it could have been a tough situation. And so like I said in the girls game, it's all about the process, getting better each day. This was a good experience for this team to, looks like they're still gonna get the win, but they face some adversity down the stretch. I promise you there's going to be a game in the playoffs. If you're gonna win the section championship, you're gonna be up by 10 and you're gonna need to figure out a way to break the press and be strong with the ball. Cook the drive and he finishes, hitting the deck hard and he's holding his side. And he is in pain. Hopefully he is okay, he seems to be. He gets up under his own power. Another guy just hitting the deck hard. You need a substitution for him. You never want to see that at the end of a game. Mm -mm. But he seems to be walking he it off. He wants to stay in the game. But he'll be gonna, subbed gonna out. Have to come out. He'll be subbed out for Tyler Thompson. So the spuds are starting to smell it. A holiday tournament championship. Inbound to Smith. Ahead to battle. And that'll do it. The Moorhead Spuds win the holiday tournament. They win it 90 to 81 here tonight. And this is what we were hoping for, this kind of game and this kind of atmosphere for the first official day of Spuds basketball in the old gym, or in the new gym, excuse me. Absolutely, and 90 points, a good showing on the offensive end. The Spuds have shown they can fill it up. Back-to-back -back nights, it's gonna come down to can they get stops consistently, but a really, really good win for this team. They faced some adversity, like I said, but they fought through it, and you gotta give them credit for that. This is a win they can build off of. Roseville's a pretty solid team, always been a pretty solid program. They did a nice job finding a way to win this one, breaking the press towards the end, making free throws. It's a really good job, and Thomas, heck of a lot of fun to be with you for these last couple of days. Absolutely, Always going to be man. back on Spuds TV, and hopefully uh, maybe get the chance to do it again sometime. Do people compare you to Tony Romo because of the way you break <laughs> everything down? It's, well, it's, it's outstanding. It's phenomenal. Well, j just you so far, but maybe more <laughs> in the future. Yeah, no, I really appreciate you being on the broadcast with me, Riley, and you're a great person to be with and work with. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's been fun to... Uh, see Spuds TV grow and see where it is today and always good to come back, like I said. That'll do it for basketball here tonight. Girls, girls team did lose earlier, but the boys team, a very solid win against the, the Roseville Raiders, 90 to 81 on the first half promo scoreboard. That'll do it for me and Riley Swenson here tonight. I am Thomas Fox, wishing you all a good night and a happy new year. This has been high school basketball on Spuds TV.